throws for the end zone. Touchdown, Parker. Pick off by Damian Howard. What's good, Finn Nation? What's good? It's your boy Reason back here for another one. And I'm joined by the god of the mod squad, Rhino Sith. What's good, Romy? Finn's up, man. Everything's going good. Better day today. Lots of news. Lots of news. And I gotta I gotta bring it up, Rhino, because we we're literally just talking about it. So we're gonna get into it, guys. Raekwon Davis and the all rookie thing. Um obviously, as everyone heard, um pro football. So the pro football writers of America, they named um, Justin Herbert, the rookie of the year. So I said to Ryan, I said, listen, Ryan, I'm going to show you something not even my ex co host saw. I want to show you like my legit scouting report, how I wrote it out, et cetera, et cetera. So we went back to my scouting report of Justin Herbert. And I was like, okay, let's see if I called this kid, he was going to be a bust. Rhino, did I even mention the now that I think of it, we didn't talk about this. Did I even mention the term red flag in my scouting report? No, there were very few negatives actually, and they were, I they actually were very didn't specific. Think. They were specific. Yeah, they were. But can I ask you this, um, Rhino? Clearly, when you read my scouting report, my biggest issue with Herbert was mechanics, right? Yeah, specifically. Like, well, what? Well, yeah, one of my biggest issues. Okay, can you just tell everyone? I I know it's three words, but I want you to tell everyone, um, what I said in my scouting report about when his mechanics are like good and when i see what i wanted to see out of his mechanics can you tell everyone what the term i used was regarding some of the throws i saw when his mechanics were perfect i believe it was a thing to behold a sight to, to behold yeah a sight to behold literally guys i said a so. sight to behold so I mean, I, I didn't think this kid was that bad, but I, I just didn't know if he'd get the coaching. Clearly, he got it. Shout out to Anthony Lynn. I know me and Rhino were talking about the offensive coordinator search backstage. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people have been wondering about Anthony Lynn from what me and Rhino could decipher. It seems like only the Seahawks, the Jags, and was there one other team? I think was it was it just the Seahawks and the Jags right now. I think it was uh, just the Seahawks and Jags. Was it that we saw? I think there was a third. I can't remember right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, so anyways, you know, it doesn't seem like let, – let it. I mean, the thing that matters the most is none of those teams was the Miami Dolphins, mm -hmm. which is surprising to me and Rhino because, like Rhino said when we were backstage, the relationship that Flores and him have, but on the same sense, you know, I think we all kind of wanted to run first guy like McDaniel because he was so – like, you know, he – because of the tree he was coming from and he was so, you know, unique and everyone called him a genius and stuff. Let me ask you this, Rhino, who would you rather Anthony Lynn or Pep Hamilton? If I had my choice, yeah, it would be, it would be Pep because uh, I think he would I get agree. along. It, it, I, like you were saying, I really think it's important to have a pass oriented uh, offensive coordinator, someone teaching that kind of offense. And I got to say this too. I saw someone say, Oh, you know, while, you know, Pep just lucked out with talent that's been dropped to him. And like, is that true though, Rhino? Because I mean, Herbert, there was a lot of concerns about Herbert because anyone who had watched him in college, he had never taken one single solitary snap under center mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. Now he worked on it in the off season and he did a little bit at last year's senior bowl, but that's one thing to do it live action, be successful doing it is another. All right. He did that. But here's the thing, you know, he did, you know, he did what he did with Andrew Luck at the collegiate and the NFL level. And the best thing I saw, oh, he just had he just had talent fall in his lap. And I'm sitting here, Rhino, what good is talent that falls in your lap if you don't know what the hell to do with it? I mean, you saw what Andrew Luck did at Stanford. The guy did legendary things at Stanford, okay? Then, you know, when he was the offensive coordinator in Indianapolis, they were the sixth best offense in the NFL. Right. Like right. I don't care if you know the quarterback. You got to know every other player on the team to be able. Like this is what I'm getting. Like where I'm getting at here. I like Pat Hamilton. I think he's a fantastic selection. But 
I mean, you know, this is where we got to start putting, and this is why they should lean more towards a guy like Pep Hamilton, the one what me and you were alluding towards, Rhino, in terms of the relationship with Flores and Anthony Lynn. I'm tired of the whole friends stuff. Yeah. Bring yeah. me winners. I don't care if anyone likes you. If you get me W's, buddy, how many people don't like Bill Belichick that have been in and out or are still in that New England locker room? But guess <laughs> what? Yeah. They yep. got rings, right? They love the ring. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, we're not here to make friends. We're here to win championships and ball games. Like, I don't understand. Well, it's well, the same the thing, thing right? with the don't worry about the name on the back. Worry about the logo. Yep. It should come down with that coaching staff. Well, it's it's like it's like anything. You don't know till you know. All you can do is go by what he's he's put in front of you. He's had success with talented players, obviously, but there are a lot of people, a lot of coaches that have had talented players and they've wasted it and they haven't done well. So, I mean, obviously, that's what the interviews for. Do you have a feel with him? Is he really intelligent? Does he really is he really is he a good teacher? Obviously, you're talking to everyone that has known him. So, I mean, it's hard for us to sit here and say yes or no, but. Looking from the outside, it looks like he would be a very viable and solid candidate. Yeah, I and, mean, and and Adrian, you know, those guys are on my list. Um, you know, Shane, Ken Dorsey, um, Lynn's actually not on my list. If I were to give you guys my exact list, I don't. Did you see when I tweeted it out yesterday, Rhino? Yeah. And Thank someone you. actually said, you know, oh, I didn't see Suitville on your list. You know, he's a candidate. And I felt I didn't want to reply to the guy because I don't want to be that asshole. <laughs> but I felt like saying, like, yo, did you not read? This is my list. Right. This is not their list. Mm -hmm. This is my list. So if you guys want to know what my um oh it actually got a little bit of love on twitter go look at that i wasn't even thinking about that i just wanted to tell everyone what it was. So my list of remaining candidates that you know that I want right now um, are Mike Kafka, Ken Dorsey, Joe Lombardi, Shane Waldron, um, Pep Hamilton, Luke Getze, um, and George Gotze. Those are the names to me that, you know, really stand out. So Could you explain Lombardi and uh, uh, what's his name? It's breaking up my picture. Uh, Shane Waldron. Who are those Okay. People? So Joe Lombardi. Um, Saints, right? Yeah, he's at the Saints right now. He's the uh, quarterback coach. I believe he's also the passing coordinator as well. Okay. Shane Waldron is the quarterback coach at um, the LA Rams right now from the McVay tree. And um, I forget what the name of their offensive coordinator is. He was the one I was telling you. They just tried to – someone block. tried to interview him, and they blocked him. So he would be the next man up. Mm -hmm. And obviously you know how it is um, – um, you know, a lot of guys don't move laterally, so usually you got to promote. So Shane Waldron, to me, is a hot name. You know, not enough people are talking about him. And another name on this list and not enough people are talking about is Luke Getze. Mm. Okay, Luke Getze, right now he's a former quarterback himself. Right now he's the quarterback coach and passing game coordinator for the Green Bay Packers, my friend. Mm. And I want a guy who's teaching Aaron Rodgers and molding Jordan Love. That's a good name that I think people, you know, not enough people are talking about. It may not happen, but that's a name that I would be interviewing. You know, Shane Waldron, that's a guy, you know, we all know Mike McDaniel has been promoted. So that's Shanahan tree. That's basically done right now. Right. Can't go pick from that. Shane Waldron, that's the guy you can pick from that McVay tree right now. Okay. Um, but I'm worried because we talked about earlier. You know, the Chargers, they just hired the defensive coordinator from the Rams, right? Yes, and I'm worried that he's going to try and bring Shane Waldron over. Okay. Right? Because that could be his move. Right. So, so I don't... So many think, names, man. So many. Yeah. So, but there's some good names on there, man. There's still some good... Now, in regards to a few of these names, guys, and I am about to hear a ton of heartbreaks... Mm -hmm. And especially me and Rhino specifically, if you listen closely and you turn up the volume, you're going to hear our hearts break. <laughs> Mike Kafka, who's at the top of that list, guys. <sighs> Chiefs are also keeping one of their top offensive minds in Mike Kafka. QB coach has interest from other teams as an offensive coordinator. Could have been us, but we'll never know. Damn. But it's part of a great thing in Kansas City. Future head coach in the making. Guys, there were rumblings. That because he's a former Philadelphia Eagle, that the Eagles were going to interview him for the head coaching job. 
Whoa. He could have made that big of a leap. Wow. But with the talk about the enemy potentially landing in Houston right now, because that talk is alive and well, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Look at what Adrian says. Um, Waldron's been the passing game coordinator in LA for three years now. I want that, Adrian. Give me Shane Waldron, baby. If I can't have Kafka or McDaniel, Shane Waldron's right up there. But yeah. anyways, um, wow. you know, when you look, if you could do that with golf, I can only imagine what you can do with Tua Tungvaloa. All mm -hmm. right? I, I hate to be the guy to say that. Um, but, okay, yeah, so with Kafka, you know, the talk is the enemy's going to take a job. He interviewed for the Eagles yesterday. And he played for the Eagles at one point, right? The enemy. He also interviewed with Houston. Um, so he, he may take a job if he gets offered one. And if he does, obviously Kafka is the organic move right. towards promoting him towards offensive coordinator. So Mike Kafka is off the market. Cross him. And then the next one, and this is, you got to look at this. This is the next one. Um, Ken Dorsey is a name we all like, especially you, you fans. I know you love him. I think he makes a ton of, ton of sense. I mean, if you can make again, if you can make Cam Newton an MVP, I can only imagine what you can do with a passer like to a tongue below. Okay. <laughs> Haul at me. So anyways, um, according to Omar Kelly, now this is him just replying to people's messages. Someone asked, is Ken Dorsey receiving any consideration for OC? He has done incredible work within his role as quarterback coach. What will it take for him to make the next step? I would love to see what he can do with Tua. And according to Omar Kelly, he is not in consideration. His team is playing. I expect him to go with Brian Dabble, who we all know will not be getting that Chargers job. So Dorsey, if he doesn't want to stay stagnant, you know, he could move on. Mm -hmm. So, because Dabble's pro Dabble's from Buffalo, Dabble's probably going to stay there, wait for a job next year. So, you know, part of this tweet is not no longer relevant. But the fact that he's not being considered, if that's true, shame on you, Chris Greer, because he should be near the top of your list. Yeah, I am sure. sorry, he should be at the top of your list. And the Dabble thing's surprising. I know so many jobs have been filled, but it's like, man, the one guy you thought had a job for sure as a new head coach was Dabo. Yeah. And it might not happen for net this year. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yep. So, okay, let's get we're gonna get right back into the offensive coordinator thing first. You know what it is, baby. Mm -hmm. We gotta give props to the homie. I hate to say I told y'all so, <laughs> but Reason told y'all so when I said we need to draft this man at 56 when Reason was starting out before when I had just started this channel, but I went over to TD Finn's talk for the for the draft, the day draft. one, day two. Day two, when you go back and you open up that show, you can literally find the receipt of Reason saying we need to take this man at 56. Mm -hmm. And boom! He has already made the 2020 Pro Football Writers of America all rookie team. Shout out to Raekwon, the chef, baby. <laughs> Y'all already know what it is. Love it, man. Only built for Dolphin Lynx. That's what it is, man. One of the few players in the world that can make an AR-15 look like a handgun in his in his in his paws, dude. In that picture you had, he's at two oh, AR-15s. Yeah. They look like handguns. Yeah. And my undying memory, along with you predicting it, is ball game when they drafted Raekwon ball game. He looked like a kid on Christmas morning, dude. I'll never forget that. He was so happy about the yeah. pick. Oh yeah, man. And <laughs> you know, I've been told guys like from numerous people that if JK Dobbins was still on the board, Raekwon Davis probably wouldn't even be a Miami dolphin. Mm. So, I mean, Hey, things happen the way they happen. He was number three. If you go back to the big board, he was number three on me and my old co-host big board. Um, you know, he was only behind Javon Kinlaw and he was only behind Derek Brown. Those are some pretty good names. And, you know, he ended up, I think Derek Brown was the, also made it as well. Did he? Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, that, hey, yeah, man, the fact that not only I called him at 56, he hit as much as I thought he would hit with this team. I don't know what to say, man. That's perfect. You know, hey, I got a lot of the draft picks right in terms of where they were leaning. And, you know, even when I said, oh, God, please don't let it be Austin Jackson. 
and they handed it in. It was Austin Jackson. I didn't want to be right. I just knew you could see, you could read the board, right? The run on tackles. Right, right. But to see a guy like this, you know, it's one thing to get a quarterback because that's a sexy position. Mm -hmm. But to get an interior defensive lineman who's asked to to do the res uh, of the responsibilities he's asked of in year one to take man that zero tech role for the majority, even when because Devon Godshaw goes down, you know, like damn, that one feels good. So, Raekwon, this one's for you. Hell yeah. Going to give myself the old pat on the back for that one. Um, beautiful stuff, man. Love to see it. And, you know, I told y'all when he came out, my comp was Chris Jones. Right. I told y'all that was my comp. And I, I see it already in year one. Um, fantastic stuff, man. Absolute great, great stuff. You know, already PFF had them on their all-rookie team. Now you see the love he's getting here, bro. And you remember, you know, early on, Rhino, we literally watched this guy grow and develop. Like, you know, he got better every single game. He worked hard, hard every single game. And to get that accomplishment, man, like, damn. He's uh, had a schedule. Man, I'm just so proud of this guy, man, because I remember so many people were questioning that pick. You know, there were people that didn't like where he was taken, and I was just like, yeah, oh, man, this is that dude. Why is everyone hating right now? And the guy's absolutely gone off and done such a fantastic job, man. Like, I don't know, man. I'm just – I don't know, bro. It's like He's watching, a team player. He's a team player. You know what I mean? Bro, yeah, that's what just, happened with Alabama. They asked him. To I'm, imagine, yeah, but imagine how I felt when I heard the training camp report of if you go back to my scouting report, is uh, you know, I said about Austin Jackson, you know, I said, you know, looks like Tarzan plays like Jane. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and then he goes out there and he rips off Raekwon's shirt. And I was like, oh, damn. And then Ray, and I was like, oh, man, I get look, made to look bad both on Raekwon and Austin Jackson. And then season ends the way it ends. Raekwon gets that. Austin Jackson plays the way he did where, let alone if you come across his face, if you even like blow across his face, you're beating him for a pressure or a sack. And, and you're scared. you know what I mean? So, yeah. But I seriously, know. though, he, he is ahead of schedule. What I heard – hearing from you in ball game and uh, EM at the time and you is that the end of the season is when he would show who he is. And he started to do it earlier, uh, late beginning and the mid season when he really sh started to show he was, he was meant to be there and he was doing a yeah. good job. Yeah. It's just, you know what I mean? It's nice to see the recognition, you know what I mean? And it, mm -hmm. and it's, and you know, what's great about this is, you know, you always hear it, you know, it's almost like a cliche, right? Like, Oh, you know, Pro bowlers and all pros, they aren't always in the first round. You know, they aren't always in the top 10, right? And just to see someone like this, like, you know, on the, on the, you know, he's on the trajectory of being a pro bowler and maybe hopefully one day an all pro. And, you know, he's a third round pick. Is there a vote for that team or is it open to fan base? Uh, how does it, do you know? Hold on. He's a second round pick, right? Yeah. 56, right? Right. Uh, sorry, say it again. No, that's the pro. Pro Football Writers of America, bro. Okay, good. So at least they have some, some knowledge of it. Good. So, like, for example, shout out to him. Showing you some love, my homie. Um, uh, uh, um, Kevin Dern is on that. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Like, it's you got you got to be respected to, to some extent. You can't be a jabroni, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's important. if It's best if it's players, but if not – Press is always uh, the good second choice for that. Yeah, and I just wanted to say, you know, like he's such a – I don't know, man. And I love the duo of him and Christian Wilkins. We just need to find that, you know, that guy to finish it off for them, I think. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I love it, baby. And y'all already know what time it is. Y'all already know where you saw it first. Y'all already know where you heard it first about him because over here – on Finside, the NFL, my friends, I mean, I don't got to say it once. I don't got to say it twice. I don't even got to say it thrice. All right? Thrice. It is. Over here, we are only built for Dolphin Lynx, man. And <laughs> shout out to Chef Raekwon for getting that. And shout out to Christian Wilkins, the Hamilton faced killer. Y'all already know what time it is. Yeah, baby. Hamilton <laughs> Y'all already like that, eh? You like yeah, that, yeah. huh? Yeah. The ghost face killer, bro. Uh -huh. <laughs> Reason does this mean thing big, bro. I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I, I do it big over here, bro. So, 
<laughs> yo, my my meme guy when I hit him up, he must be like, yo, what is this guy like on right now? You what know? are you doing, bro? No, because he's European. <laughs> yo, but he's like from Spain, bro. So he's like, must be like, what is this guy on? He you get know, it. <laughs> you know, he must be like, what is this? You know what I mean? Shout out to him though. He does a fantastic job. He does all my graphic work. I love you, Hideki. You know you might do, homie. He does. Uh, yo, man, he's been with me since day one. Mm-hmm. Literally day one, Hideki. Shout out, and also shout out if y'all into Dr- Dokkan Battle, anything like that. If y'all into Dragon Ball Z, shout out to my homie Tiger Uppercut Media, also from Toronto. He's got over hundred thousand subscribers. Shout out to the homie. He's the one who put me on to Hideki. So shout out to you, Tiger. Love you, homie. And yo, if y'all into Dragon Ball anime, go check him out. Um, he's got over 100,000 subscribers. Show him some love. But <clears throat> that's where my link comes from. So except from the anime world, man. So shout out to, to all of y'all, Hideki and Tiger, man. Love you guys. So, all right, let's keep it rolling. Um, all right. Um, so let's get back to the OC thing for a sec. Because now I want to pose a theory. And in posing that theory, I want to go over, um, you know, I want to go over their hire today. So the hire today is this. That the Miami Dolphins, they announced today that Lemuel Jean-Pierre has been, and that's literally, he's Haitian. You know, you that's how you promote it. It's right here. Lemuel, Lemuel. Jean Pierre um, has yeah. been pr- uh, promoted to offensive line coach of the Miami Dolphins. Um, Jean Pierre served as the off- assistant offensive line coach. The Dolphins have parted ways with offensive line coach Steve Marshall and Rhino. I told you what the info is, and I allow you to tell the world who was Steve Marshall's guy. Shockingly, Gailey's. Yes, Steve Marshall was a Chan Gailey guy. So the purge has begun, my friend. Yes. <laughs> the purge has begun. So Steve Marshall, you're out. Um, Lemuel Jean-Pierre, you're in because you are a Flores guy, Haitian background. Fantastic. Love to see. I was mistaken. I thought Flores was Haitian, but he was Honduran. Right. Um, so, you know, love to see those two. You know, let's just see some diverse. Like, look, at we getting all the islands out here, baby. Mm-hmm, Sharif, mm-hmm. where are you at? You're next, brother. I remember. Well. Um, so, <laughs> yo, hey, you keep it up, Rhino. <laughs> yeah, you're Jamaican born. You're up too, buddy. Yeah, bro. So, um, Jean Pierre just finished uh, his first season with the Dolphins as an assistant offensive line coach. He joined Miami and great work to Travis on this. This is a fantastic article. Go read it. He joined Miami um, following two seasons as an offensive line coach for Oakland. Um, Jean Pierre mm-hmm. began coaching career as an offensive assistant for seattle and i know you said mm, because you know how i feel about that raiders offensive line yes rhino yes, yes all right I mean. so yeah <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah exactly so he played it's a good thing nfl seasons with seattle wow. um he helped them win the super bowl mm. um he also spent time as a player with kansas city and detroit marshall joined the dolphins for the 2020s blah 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 you're gone buddy nice Bye. knowing you Okay, now let's get in. This is why this is so key. Great work by Travis here. <clears throat> um, veterans and rookies alike attributed Jean Pierre's knowledge of the game, communication, and teaching skill set. Again, we go back to that teaching thing, Rhino. Yeah. Right? Yeah, right. Man. Always comes back to that teaching as strong points during his first year in Miami. He's played the game, Jesse Davis said. And I quote, I played with him in Seattle, actually, so I knew him for a short stint there as well. (laughs) But he offers a great way to look at the game, too, on how a player looks at it instead of a coach. Lem, because that's what they call him, guys. They call him Lem. They call him Coach Lem. Okay? They they don't call him Lemieux. They call him Lemieux. They call him Lem, all right? So Lem. (laughs) Yeah, Coach Lem is what you – just like we call Coach Flores Flo – Call him Lem. So Lem has done a good job with everybody as well as their techniques to the competition that we're playing that week. The Dolphins started three offensive rookie linemen in a game for the first time in franchise history. Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, and Kinley started six games together and combined to play 2,314 snaps in 2020. Kinley back in October spoke about the competitive atmosphere Jean-Pierre helped 
cultivate in the Dolphins offensive line. Well, I love hearing that. Thanks. Me, Rob, and Coach Lem, we were going to see who kind of gets the most knockdowns, who was going to get the most pancakes, Kinley said. I remember that, Zoom. He said, that's like a, like a good goal between your partner next to you because if I'm trying to do my best and he's trying to do his best, that means everybody's best is going to keep going up. So I love that. I love the competition with him. I actually remember I sat in on that Zoom. So there you go, man. Like that is some, that's some good stuff, man. And here we go. Let me hit you with this rhino and let me pose the question. Let me type it in here. So everyone knows where I'm going with this. Now, this is a great hire. We, you know, obviously we can all agree. That's a great move. Um, but sure. let me ask you the question, rhino. Does this, Promotion indicate an internal hire at OC. That is my question to you. And my question is based off of this. We talked about this, Rhino. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, we look at our list. Kafka's out. This team's in the playoffs, but he's out, okay? Dorsey. He's in the playoffs, and we all want him to be interviewed. Here's the thing. The enemy is being interviewed. Is he not? Yes, he is. The problem like is that. you can't be hired until you're out. Right. So they can interview you, but they can't hire you. So here's my mm -hmm. thing. We haven't even interviewed Dorsey. I ask you this. That we know of, which, but yeah. Yes, Okay. Now we're starting to hire people. Flores is promoting his guys. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, whether you hire Studesville or you hire Godsey internally, you're going to have a tight ends coach or a running back coach job open up. Okay. Right. My question to you now is this. Wouldn't you wait for your own, for an OC hire to bring his own guy in if he was external? Because he's going to want to bring in any opening he can fill in with his own guys. Right. And the reason why I say this now is, what if with the senior bowl on the horizon, because guess what, guys? I talked to someone before we started. Okay, I wanted to check from what I heard, from what I understand, from someone who's going to be there and be involved, at least with the virtual process and everything. There is the senior bowl is full steam ahead. So let me pose to you this Canada promoted McDaniel promoted. All right. Pep still sitting, but he's been sitting out there so long. You got to think they would have made the move by now. Yeah. You have to have. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No Kafka, reason not to. We want Kafka. He's mm -hmm. basically come out. He's not leaving. All right. right. We've been indicated by someone you know, in the adult Miami media that there are not interviewing Dorsey mm -hmm. because I guess there was fluctuation with the dabble thing, right? Yep. That goes the way it goes. But anyways, we know that he's on the list. All right. Yeah. Now you make this higher. You have the senior bowl on the horizon. What if it's so neck and neck between Godsey and Studesville because their floor is his guys that he wants an internal competition for the coordinator position. At that he wants role. to see. Hey, yeah, I got four quarters. Okay. Studesville take two. Um play calling. God seed take two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Run the offense of these seniors. Yeah. Two quarters to you, two quarters to you. I want to see you work with them before the game because I have a week leading up to the game, right? Mm -hmm. I have a week. Of, of leading up to the game, I can see you work with these kids. Then I can see you call plays with these kids. Right. Let me see what you can do because maybe that's what this has come to. Because I kept saying Canada, he was a consultant last year. He would have been hired like that if they really wanted him. Because right. here's my thing. If they were waiting on someone, we would already have an idea of who it might have been because they would have already interviewed the person because you can interview while your team's in the playoffs. You Like Shane Waldron, his team's out. What yeah. are, you know, we would have already heard something. Well, Get my, the, they, you know, they would have already probably asked for an interview. Right. I, th I think, I think it leans heavily that because coach Lem accepted the job as the offensive line coach, 
that whoever is going to be the offensive line coach agrees with that move because I, I can't imagine that he would accept that job unless he felt he was going to keep that job because that, there's nothing more embarrassing than getting a job like that. And then someone comes in and you're gone. What's the point? There's no point. It doesn't. So it's either an external hire that they've agreed to, to hire coach Lem and keep him in that position or more than likely it is an internal situation and a competition could be at hand. Like you said, why not? At the, we know Flo loves competition. He's all about competition. That's why this is my theory. That's why this is my theory. The senior bowl, look at how many teams pass because of the circumstances. Hell, the Bill Belichick led Saints, where everyone tries to say we're like the pay, like the Patriots. Sorry, the Bill Belichick led Patriots, where everyone tries to say we're like the Patriots. They passed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We didn't. And they're in a position where they need to rebuild too. So yeah, because people, I want to remind people, we got this coaching gig at the Senior Bowl with our 18th pick, not with the third pick. Right. Yeah, not so third. So I'm just saying, like, you have an opportunity to see what these guys can do with young talent. Yeah, how, how they how they uh, approach that week, how they're gonna you know interact with them and coach them, like you're saying. Yeah, I, it well, makes sense. My, Mike who asked about Lombardi and Callahan. Here's my thing, guy. Here's my thing, Mike who. Those guys, here's what I'm telling you. They all could have interviewed. It's just you can't be hired until your team season is over. You can interview during the playoffs. You just can't, especially now when it's all Zoom, mm -hmm. you just can't, you just can't be hired. So Lombardi would have been already, he's on my list, but he should have by he should have already been interviewed. It, here's what I'm saying. If they haven't inter already interviewed Lombardi or or Ken Dorsey, but they want to, what the hell are you waiting for? That's what I'm, there's no reason for them not to have interviewed them. That's where I'm going. Yes, we want them, but I'm saying they're, I'm countering my own guys that I want. Cause I'm saying there's no reason why they shouldn't have interviewed yet. Right. Yeah. It has to be someone remaining in the playoffs. If that's their choice outside, more than likely it seems to be internal. That's what I'm saying. Maybe the senior yeah. bowl is about a head coaching competition. Internally, but my, but my question is if it's internal, why wouldn't they announce it? Why That's, would you? No, I'm just saying because, why, because why now wouldn't? anyone else, now you're scaring off anyone else who you know what if what if they wake up tomorrow and they want to interview one of those guys we named? Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Right. So he's trying to set up a situation that that best serves the team flow. Because here's the thing: can we agree on this? Mm. Okay, Godsey and Studesville, those are Flores' guys and Flores' hires. It seems so. They're his guys, yeah. So mm -hmm. he wants to see what his guys and his hires might have to offer. They've been here for two years, his whole term. So, And here's the thing. Guess what? Through O'Shea and through Gailey, what have those two heard? They've heard what he didn't like from those coaches <laughs> and what he wanted from his offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. They have a better idea than anyone else because they've just watched. They've watched two guys fail. They watched a guy who has an overcomplicated system that wasn't a good teacher, and then a guy with a simplified system who was apparently a good teacher but still had the umbilical cord stuck to Ryan Fitzpatrick. And I have to say, in this situation, the the pressure is on Flores to get this correct. This would this would be three strikes of finding offensive coordinator, and we can't have that. That has to be corrected. It's very important for the team, let alone him. Because let me ask you this. Is anyone else worried that we're two years in and we've already gone through two offensive coordinators? <laughs> Give me a migraine yesterday. That's what. That's how concerned I am. <laughs> Sharif, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Sharif. We're doing, doing great, man. That's great news. So yeah. what do you think about my theory about having an internal competition because Canada's been promoted, McDaniel's been – like all the names on their list are basically falling off by the wayside side because they didn't have Dorsey. They didn't have Lombardi. They didn't have Kafka on the list. And if they did have Kafka, he's gone. Um, you know, all these guys are falling by the wayside. Right. So here's, you know, I wanted Shane Waldron. He wasn't on their list. But, you know, the Chargers just hired the Rams defensive coordinator and they could do what San Fran did where San Fran, Salah, what did he do? He took what? He took the quarterback coach over with them, right? Yeah. And Right? So now you might get... In Chargers, they might take the Rams quarterback coach Shane Waldron, who I want. Well, we're stuck here. Could we be left with an internal 
higher battle. And I don't mean like they're naked, like it's a blood feud, but I mean, could he be saying, hey, we got the senior bowl coming up. Here's an opportunity. Show me what you guys can do. Here's two quarters as the offensive coordinator to you, Godsey. Here's two quarters to you, Studesville. Let me see. And you have the whole week prepping with these kids so I can sit back and watch how you deal with these kids. Could he be creating an internal competition? Because they're both Flores guys. Right. So could he, and he's you saw it, he's purging Gailey guys. So right. could he be take starting an internal competition for the job like it's a football position on the field? I stand I stand on that and I, I grit my feet in the ground on that. And you you heard it here, guys, on the fin, on fin side the NFL. And reason had this theory with with uh <clears throat> More not getting his uh resp responsibilities back, and this is from the hours. Robbie Brown, Robbie Brown, yeah, Brown. Robbie Brown, Robbie yeah. Brown. So QB coach, uh, exactly. So this is now the theory. Now after the season, where Flores once again likes the competition, he probably saw uh where <clears throat> um how gods he handled himself, and and wasn't afraid to do something like this again. So I completely am in 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 with that idea, and that's Flores' kind of thing. That's that's he's the competition type of guy. Can we just say though, when when Gotsi, uh was basically to was uh, in, inter in, you know uh, middle person between him and Gailey, he was doing two jobs. He was he was still the tight ends coach and doing that. Okay, the quarterback coach. So he he rose to a very trying time. It had to be trying. Because you're talking about six, seven coaches gone because of COVID, and everyone's picking up the slack. So you know they had to impress uh, Flo. It had to. Yeah. And one, and one thing I realized, Rhino, <clears throat> Flo no, said it a bunch of times in his press. We prepare, over prepare for these COVID situations. So right. from week one, they already ran through probably drills of, hey, if this one gets COVID, then we had, you know, who has to coach? You know, and if, unfortunate, fortunately, we didn't have Flores do, you know, get the COVID, but he already had in place who would take over for Chan, who would right. take over, you know, and that is good for today, for, for now. And yep. the Senior Bowl. For sure. <laughs> and Ori, yeah, the Senior Bowl is live. It's on the NFL Network. I mean, I think it was Ryan or Dame looked it up and verified that. Damien. Uh, yeah, Damien, you were backstage with us when he did that, though, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so it is, and I'll be live for it, guys. So, well, I'll have it open up to you guys to come on and talk about it. <clears throat> um, so, all right. I got to ask. I got to play the game, though. And, guys, <laughs> as you all come back, um, as you come on, I'm going to go back to the offensive um, coordinator issue. I want to hear everyone's thoughts on that, obviously. But now we got to play a game of what if. <clears throat> and I want to hear everyone in the comments. I'll drop the link one more time. If you want to hop on and, and give your thoughts, because it's not ending, guys. So get used to it. This is what it is. This is what we're dealing with right now. Yep. And this is eerily similar to what Reason proposed minus the 36th. But would you or would you not say yes to the following trade? <laughs> The Miami I Dolphins received Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans would receive Tua Tungvaloa, the third overall pick and the first round pick in the 2020 draft. Can I answer? <laughs> oh, go ahead, bro. Everyone knows I love Tua. I love him to death. They couldn't hold me back from running to the table to agree to that deal. Okay. That is, it's never going to happen. But I would take that in a millisecond, okay? That's too much to pass on. We still have a commodity to fill our team with a top five, top six quarterback. No, it's – I love to, but it's too easy. Yeah, because what you would still have, guys, you'd still have the 18th this year. You'd have the 36th. You would have the 50th. You would have the 81st. You would have the 130. Like you'd have the low hundreds, you'd have like 113th, I think. Mm -hmm. Then you'd have the 185, you'd have the 186, you'd have the second next year, and you have the third, fourth, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Tons, tons, and a second next year, and a third next year. And God knows what what uh what what uh Greer could uh conjure guys, out of his sleeves. Guys, I'm telling you right now, this is cast like like yo, Jesus, we win that trade. Easy. Like right now, we win that trade. Now in five years, mm. I don't know what to tell you, but day one, we would win that trade. 
Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say well, I'm not going to sit here and say whether I do it or not, but that is, guys, that is literally as close to robbing Deshaun Watson from the Houston Texans as you can get away to. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would have to say if if I'm thinking how Greer's thinking, I, I'm gonna want the the best linebacker, the, the one who we like. I, I, you got to throw him in there. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm playing. I, <laughs> I'm gonna win, win, win this trade. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. That's already like you would already be pushing it, bro. <laughs> like <laughs> that, that's already like, dude. Like all you need is a ski mask. Yeah, yeah, and a Glock nine millimeter, and you're going to way for armed robbery for the rest of your life for at least twenty years, probably. The dumpsters, the dumpsters would literally have to be burning in Texas Stadium for to get to get more out of that. Than Dude, that. Nick Castro <laughs> would be fired the next day, bro. Yeah, before the ink is dried. Oh, bro. And what would be even here? This is where I'm not. This is where I would play the game. I don't want to get in the third. I would try to make that the 18th. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now I now yeah. I'm not giving you the pick you traded me for Laramie, and I can still get Panay Sewell or Devontae Smith. Now I really gave you the old, the old heave ho. But I mean that'll never happen. This this can't this would never happen. This would can't never. happen. Never. Yeah, they want they want a treasure trove. Yeah, that's not yeah, gonna happen. happen. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. So Todd, um, what's going on, buddy? I wanted to hear your thoughts before we get your thoughts on what you see in front of you. Hey Todd. What were your thoughts on what I said about the whole offensive coordinator internal competition potentially going on right now? I that's the only way I could see it happening because you're keeping so many guys in house with the OC, uh, our offensive line coach. Mm-hmm. You're you're not going to bring an offensive coordinator in without changing everybody. Yeah, to right. who he wants. Yeah. Hmm. So, and yeah. I've been thinking from the beginning it's going to be Godsey. I mean, that's what I like. You know, I was joking around. I was trolling people with Sarkeesian. I didn't think we'd actually be in a point where Sarkeesian was actually free. We'd be able to hire him. Um, but, I, man, I wish he didn't go to Texas. Just like if he would have waited three weeks. Um, and then, you know, you know, I've been saying Godsey. If they're going internal, Godsey makes the most sense. I know Studesville, but, like, man, am I the only one who doesn't want a running back coach? Like, am I literally the only one who doesn't? Like, I wanted Mike McDaniel because he's a running game coordinator because everyone said he was a genius and, you know, in terms of the playbook, not just – he wasn't limited to the running he game. He is, but it, I don't think he would have been good for us. Why do you think that? He runs his own offensive line type. <clears throat> Look at what San Francisco always runs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, you'd have to get rid of Karras. Well, yeah, but even our even our guards aren't really set up for zone. They're power. Yeah. Well, then you'd have to keep Hunt at right tackle, and you could, you could, you could keep, you could find your new right guard, and then you could see what you, Kinley's not that bad at pulling, and, and like he doesn't have the worst feet in the world, and he's not that bad. But I see what you're saying. You'd have to redo the front base, the interior, basically. Yeah, I'll, I just don't think he would have been a our scheme fit for us. And to be honest with you, Godsey comes under a good tree of offensive coordinators. Because even look out, Houston was going through their problems, but they still put up points every week. Well, when he was there in 2015, they were the 15th best passing attack in the NFL, and he did that with uh, Yates. Um, he did that with Yates, Brandon Whedon, uh, Hoyer, and one other person. Yeah, Hoyer. Hoyer. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, you get, he is the person I would want to promote. It almost seems like they're trying to find it. Looks like we have this guy, let's see if we can find someone better, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> like, I, I hope he gets it. I, I really do. Yeah, I, but I, I think today kind of finalized that by promoting the offensive line coach. It seems that way. Would you do this trade on your screen in front of you? Can you, can, can you see it? All right, I've been saying let's keep with the process, but if that one fell, <laughs> how do you I'm, say no? There's, there's no way they would Texans, do that. I'm making the deal, hanging up the phone, laughing my ass off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
buddy, I'm not even just, I'm calling the NFL offices to make sure it goes through. I'm running, I'm <clears throat> make, running an errand boy down there to make sure they get it. <laughs> Pyro, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? Hey, Pyro. Oh my God. Good, like, it would good? be the biggest joke after that. Yeah, boy. Yeah, I know. Um, Pyro, what did you think about the whole offensive coordinator thing going on right now? Well, you know, I'm same as everybody. I'm kind of a little disappointed that we didn't, you know, pounce on any of these guys coming out. And uh, oh, yeah. I like I understand you want to go internally, you know, do roll with the guys you know personally. <laughs> but I, I just think that we should honestly just go out of our comfort zone. You know, I'm talking about Flores. Because sometimes you may need to do that just to, you know, get a winning culture, you know, a winning offense out there, you know, a, a, you know, a somewhat good offense going. Because right now, you know, like Rhino said, you, you already failed twice, you know, three strikes, you're out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I, I just feel like you – maybe he's taking – you know, he's very cautious right now and saying, okay, I need to get this one right, so let me just take my time with it. And not rush it. So, but you know, I don't. I don't really know what is going on in that uh building. So, yeah. I ride with Florida. You know. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, shout out. Follow Finn's line on Instagram, guys. Um, he said kind of random, but who would be a better backup, Jamie? Buddy, I would take Jamie Newton in a heartbeat. If y'all okay. no reason, I've been the biggest Jamie Newman fan for like two years, bro. Since going back to Wake Forest, like the whole reason Sage Surratt. You see him so high. He owes a lot of that to, to Jamie. Jamie had Jamie Newman. If you actually go by the analytics, had a better deep ball than Joe Burrow did last year at LSU. <clears throat> if you actually go by the analytics last year, Jamie Newman, like literally analytically, did have a better deep ball at Wake Forest at Wake Forest than Joe Burrow did at LSU, throwing to like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, Thaddeus Moss, et cetera, et cetera. Just oh, think yeah. about that one for a minute. Jamie Throwing Newman is very, off. very talented. The problem is Brock Purdy. He didn't take the step forward this year. So you can probably get Brock Purdy late, late, late day three. Jamie Newman might go early day three. He's very, very talented. And you know, if you go off the Wake Forest film, there's some good film there, man. Um, and then shout out to Pyro. MC Brown 3 says, Pyro, your boy Najee is signed with Beast Mode Agency today. Mm. Nice. So, so there you go. He's ready to get that. He's yeah, exactly. R look at Adrian. Jamie Neiman could have been drafted day two last year. Agreed, bro. I, if you ask anyone who knows me, I kept telling people, watch this kid at Georgia. And when he opted out after going to the transfer portal, of Georgia, I was so sad because I was like, yo, this guy's gonna be knocking on the first round if he if he plays at Georgia this year, man. So hey, I'm not sad if we can land him as a backup day three. Oh, yeah, he's a stud, man. I wouldn't mind taking a backup a, a project like that that you can just work on and just chill with and just, like, take up a couple years to groom. That sounds the, the best route for me instead of spending money. Why spend money on, a on like, stop? That we was don't 8 need million. to. $8 million for Fitz. wasn't cheap. Well, yeah, eight, $8 million and a bunch of fucking emotional baggage, bro. I don't want any of that again, dude. <clears throat> yeah. Pardon my language, everyone, but Jesus, I got this guy crying – in front of a Zoom, then I got Chan Gailey playing. Look what I can do when you put in fits over Tua, and it calls a totally different game plan and, and opens the playbook far more. All right, I'm getting now Gasecki's getting matched up against Raekwon when you only tried it once the whole time when Tua was in, and that was at the beginning of the game. Like, hey. I'm tired of this, man. Tired of the clubhouse. I want W's. I don't want friendships, bro. You know what? Be friends when you're winning. Be yep. friends when you can sit back, smoke cigars, and pop champagne, talk about the championships you just won. That's when you can be friends. Until then, be winners or do your damn best to be winners. Hey, Reason, how happy were you when Canada got promoted? Because I know I was happy. Oh, buddy. The 83 motion, man. Bro, I got into it with someone on Twitter. I'm like, bro, I don't need to see this guy motion 83 times for – a freaking halfback delay, bro. Literally, I was telling Rhino, I'm watching this guy, okay? Man, I watched the watch like 50, 60 plays of this guy, eh? And ask Rhino how I feel about, like, I, I, okay, pre snap motion still is a necessity, okay? Ask Rhino, I will say that. You know, you still need to tell whether guys are man, zone, etc. I get that. That's not where the special stuff is happening. Exactly. The yeah. NFL is moving towards motion at the snap. Right. That's where I want. 
I want motion at the snap <laughs> with a little pre-snap. Mo- I don't want – anyway, so I watched 60 plays this guy. Literally, like, two or three of them are motion at the snap. Buddy, I watched this one – oh, my God. I watched this one play, bro. I'm not even <laughs> lying to you, bro. 12-man personnel, okay? Uh, it's trips left. Uh, trips left, 12-man personnel, okay? Receiver slot. Buddy, the receiver in the slot – there's a receiver in the slot tight to the two tight ends, okay? Right? I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. And so, you know, well, you know where it is, right? Yeah. So, sorry. No, what was it? It was it was dubs to the left. It was dubs to the left because there's one split out wide and one in line in the slot. But he was tight. He was tight yeah. to the two tight ends, okay? Right. So, I'm watching this, all right? Quarterback goes under center. My word, this is what happens. I'm not lying to you. Literally, I watch... The outside tight end motion to the inline on the right side from the left. Okay. Then I watch the inline tight end on the left side motion to the outside on the right. Right. Now I watch the slot guy motion over to the right side, staying in tight with the same slot look while the guy stays split out on the left side still. Right. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to see here? Yo, this is interesting. <laughs> Buddy. They snapped the ball. Literally what I just told you. Half back to lay up the middle for 12 yards at the collegiate level, bro. You know that like, had what to be the that? collegiate level. The, the damn 24-second clock would have run out in the NFL. Buddy, I'm sitting here watching this. I'm like, this gets you 12 yards at the collegiate level. What are you getting at the NFL for all that work for? A delay like, a game. Like, Yeah, a delay a game. What do you, but seriously, if you get the playoff, what are you getting, four yards? Yeah. Like, I literally sat there. I watched all this for that. Not even a passing play. <laughs> like, dude, you could have just motioned the slot guy, found out if they were in zone or man, and we could have let this thing roll, buddy. Like, so I watch, I think I watched a play I'm right, sorry, I... where the guards and the tackles moved. So now the defense didn't know, or the defense in college didn't know who, who was the center. And I was like, really? You're moving the tackles and the guard. Not to the strong side. Now you're taking them from the weak side to the strong side. So they're heavy on the right. And I guess the defense didn't know and it went for a big play. But I'm like, dude, you're going to be moving Kinley and Jackson around. What are you doing? Yeah, but the only know. reason the only reason you move around is like Reese said, is to find out whether you're in zone or man. That's the main point of it. Yeah, you know what they did? You know, you, okay, you know what the other two motions were? The other two motions were literally just to waste time off the play clock. That's yeah. all they were. So it runs down. Yeah, it was literally so the last motion happens and shows us the coverage at the last second, so we make the snap. The, literally, that's why he did all that. The important stuff is happens the second after the snap. Yeah. Are you going to hand it off to the running back? Are you going to fake and throw it to the to the slot guy? And everything happens at the same time. It's not like if one guy is in one position. Yeah, you're not you know, tricking. You're, yeah, it's it, it's the same thing run over and over. That is where the special stuff is happening right now, yeah. not pre-snap. Yeah, because what you do, right? You set keys, and then you lead them with a false key later on when they start picking it up. Right. right, and then you start toying them, and you set set so them you, up. When you start doing motion at the snap on all these different plays, you can set keys on all these different plays, and then so you false key them on this play. You go back to a look that they saw earlier. You false key them on that play. Now it's a big game. Like see <clears> what I'm <throat> saying here? Like it's way you, you set that up with motion at the snap. You do not set that up with pre snap. Right. Like Jesus hey, Christ, man. But just to let everything go about this Watson stuff, I wanted to say. Oh, before Watson you start, stay- Todd. Before you go uh, there, I had to bring this up. If you look at what the Miami Dolphins Twitter says, hmm. it says Ohana. Family. Samoan for family, right? What the yep. hell, bro? Just saying. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Just saying. I have a feeling Watson's staying with the Texans. And I have a feeling we're drafting Panay Sewell. I can pray on it today. What is going on? My mind just blew. Blew up, dude. What, that you saw that? Why would they? This is like a totally different franchise, bro. They play the game. I don't everyone care what anyone. They the play the game. Everyone in the building has changed, Rhino. 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 Wow, bro. Rhino. What did I tell? You? Remember what I told you privately about what someone told me about stuff being in right in front yes, of us. Yes. Yes. Remember They're I told so you that. Good at this man. I'm telling you. Oh, I people, can't people don't pick up out. on it. People don't pick up on it because it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I hope it plays out the way I think. I'm just saying, you know, that's like, and if it's not, that's a hell of a smoke screen right there, bro. <laughs> you heard the bong. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying that's pretty, that's, you know, I mean, they're telling y'all right there. Oh, sorry, it's Hawaiian. It's not Samoan. It's Hawaiian. That, even, I'm just thinking they're running it with Tua. They're not even thinking about it. Dude, I, you can't, dude, you can't sell Greer. I, I like the ultimate smoke screener. He causes like freaking journalists to lose their jobs nearly. Did you did you hear the new team involved in the who's putting a package together for Deshaun Watson is today? Please let it happen. Please, I can say I don't want to. Maybe they know. Should I bring it up for people? Should I show uh, yeah. them instead of us yes. telling them? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I think so it's let me important. show people because no one wants to talk about this. Mm-hmm. But and this is clearly from and this is from Ian Rappaport, guys. And it says that right at the bottom. So no, Jets are yesterday. Jets are yesterday news. Yeah, yeah Jets are yesterday. Yeah, so here yeah, is what the Carolina. latest report is. The Panthers could be in the mix for Deshaun Watson via Ian Rappaport. Mm-hmm. Wow. They have the number nine pick, I think. What right? did I tell everyone yesterday? Why did they do this two and a half months, Eighth almost pick. two and a half months out? Because yeah. they wanted to get a bunch of suitors in line, man. You crazy reason? Why would they do that? Why would yeah. they do that? Yeah. But you and know I, can't, I said it to Joe B, it? and I love you, Joe B. But what's crazy is to me, all y'all pitching tents over the possibility of Watson coming here. What's funny is y'all don't even realize your favorite team's being leveraged. That's what's hilarious. Y'all don't even know that your team has been leveraged to gain all these suitors. That's what's you know hilarious. What's funny about it, San Fran, the Jets, Carolina is now lined up. I'm hearing Washington is for Gross. real yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. So there's four. Tell and what did I tell y'all? Why did they use us? Because literally, what was the news? National media because of PFF right. and all right. these outlets the week before. Oh, the Dolphins are going to take Justin Fields or Zach Wilson with the third pick. If you're an agent. Think about an agent, guys. Start mm-hmm. thinking like a fan. Start thinking of things like from a PR standpoint, all this stuff. As an agent, what's the bam? What's the light bulb gonna go off? Yeah. That's the team we can use to leverage this situation with. Come on, exactly. this exactly. is PR 101, people. Mm-hmm. Don't the- fall for the okie doke. I keep telling y'all. <laughs> and, and, and it's like you said, reason they're gonna say, Oh, he wants to go to Miami, and it's and it's a tax free. So if you Who want doesn't him, want to go gotta... to Miami? Ninety no, percent of saying. the players live here. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm just like you know well, I'm trying not to agree with you. I'm you saying, that. you know, yeah. and, and like you said, because they're gonna use that as leverage, and they're gonna say, "Okay, you gotta pay up. You don't want to go to the Dolphins." So yeah, but you know what? Scramble kind of, to get it's him. It's kind of funny. Watson has the last say though with the no trade clause. Does he though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, Carolina has a very good history. With um, social justice and African American yep. quarterbacks, yep, yeah, very good history. Look at Washington Teddy Bridgewater. Doesn't. Washington's a new culture, though. Look they still the same they owner, though. Cam Newton for years. Yeah, the same owner who wanted them to draft a African American quarterback. Dwayne Haskins was his pick. Yep. So yeah. I bet you didn't know that. I bet you didn't know that one, did you? Just so that, you know. that's why he stuck around. I kept yep. telling everyone, go back. When I was on that other platform, Todd, everyone was sitting here saying, oh, they're going to, they might take two at number two. I said, all of you are morons. Ron Rivera didn't even sit in on the interview. Why? Because he was hired with the understanding that that was a Snyder pick. Haskins, he's got to go. And what happened? Ron Rivera brought his own guy over as insurance, right? Alex Smith came back, the feel good story. Haskins continued with his maturity issues. They yep. said good. That was Ron Rivera's <laughs> way out of bringing in his guy. Allen got the start. Then they went to Alex Smith. Boom. Now Ron Rivera can go get his guy. Yep. Great. That was literally, he. you could tell. Ron Rivera just said, yeah, okay. He nodded his head and said, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll take your guy. And you could tell. He just, as soon as he got the opportunity, boom, gone. Because that was an owner pick. That wasn't a coach pick. So, yeah, the owner wanted, and but again, you go back to Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera has a good, like him and Cam are still friends. 
Yep. I, I keep asking this. Does he really have the leverage with the no trade? I, I keep saying. Dude, I keep telling people. People think, oh, you got a no trade clause. So you can, you're only going to get traded to one team. Listen. Right. No. <laughs> I come. Listen. I tell all y'all. I watch hockey. I'm watching the Capitals and the Penguins right now as we're doing this, okay? All right? So I watch hockey just as much as I watch football. And guess what? In hockey, no trade clauses aren't foreign to me. Like it is for you. I just saw right? two reasons. Like, like, I know, eh? Like you guys don't, you guys don't see him very much. <laughs> Every yeah. superstar in the NFL, uh, sorry, in the NHL, they get a no trade clause. Yeah. Okay. Because there's not just no trade clause. There's actually limited no trade clauses as well. I don't know if any of y'all have heard of that, but a limited yeah, no yeah. trade clause yeah. is in the off season. You have to hand in a list of teams. Um, you will not like the teams you will not accept the trade to. But anyways, with a no trade clause, when you come to the understanding between man, this is how it works, okay? Because I've seen players get traded with superstars get traded with full on stuff. What happens is you come like if I'm the if I'm said player and Ryan or your management, I come to you and say, okay, I want to trade. I want out. This ain't working. You do your little but I'll try to make it work. Then we come to the yeah. agreement. You come to me and say, okay, it's not working. You come to me and you will say. Reason, give me a list of five to ten teams you would accept a trade to. Right. Then you will take that list, you will go and try and get the best packages possible, and you will come back with a list of like three, four, maybe even five teams out of that ten and say, these are the packages I'm willing to take, and these are the teams I'm willing to take them from. Which team are you willing to sign off on? Then Reason would sign off on said team. Whichever one, it doesn't care about the compensation for me. I just pick which one I go. I sign off. Bam, deal done. That's what they do. They don't just don't sit back and say, oh, well, I want to go there and make it happen. This isn't the uh, NBA. So what happens is when you're dealing with a salary cap like this and it's not a soft, soft cap like the NBA, right. is they're, you're going to have to give a list, man, because you're going to have to make it work. But here's because the problem thing. they have to deal with is they're already $21 million in the, dead, in the hole this um Houston is already negative $21.6 million going into this offseason. Mm -hmm. If they trade Deshaun Watson, they have to eat another $21.5 million cap hit, dead cap. Mm -hmm. So they will be over negative 40. They will be about negative 43 million in the hole when they trade him. And then their two highest contracts, the cap hit is Tunsil at 19 for uh, this season coming up. He's not going anywhere. And Watt and JJ Watt is only 17 million. So even if you get rid of him, you still got to make up for 26 million. Yeah. But this is my thing. Okay. Everything you Which said is, is why up. I think they're going to be looking for a team with a young quarterback on a rookie contract, whether it's us, the Jets, or a couple other teams. Yeah. But here's the thing why? Because what I've just told you, it basically what I've just told you is okay, listen. If if I'm gonna take forty, if I'm gonna take on this trade and I'm gonna trade him and I'm gonna take twenty one and a half million, and then the other one is like twenty one. I'm already twenty one point six um, in the hole, so now I'm forty three million in the hole. Okay, I have now. I now need to enter a full on re every right. single contract that matters is gone. Like literally, because I can't get rid of Tunsil. That's nineteen million. I'm stuck. What? I got to get rid of that 17 million. I still got 26 million. They got to get, go look at their contracts. There aren't that very many. So now you got to literally, because here's the thing this year, 21 million next year. I uh, he's 15 million. Then the year after that is 10 million. So in, in three years, you have to eat 46, about $46 million of dead cap from Deshaun Watson. If you trade him. <coughs> so I need to, and then year four, I only have a $5 million dead cap hit. So you literally need to enter a three-year rebuild. Right. Like you literally need picks, and that's why they, they're going to need a treasure trove. Because when you trade him financially, you have to enter a three-year rebuild because you got to move off from J.J. Watt. you got to move off from all these people, and you have to hit the reset button. That's what, that recon that's what people aren't realizing that that contract does. It puts them into a full blown reset, like full blown. But this is my thing. Even if everything you're saying is true, I, I, I agree. But if they have a deal with a team, okay, and they show Desh uh, Deshaun Watson the deal, and he says no, he has two choices. He either takes the deal or he sits. My question is, is this guy willing to sit? 
that is the ultimate question that I would be asking if I was the GM. Because if he's not willing to, to, to sit, the no trade cause is, is useless. Because he has to take whatever deal they get. Because if not, if he's not willing to sit, what's See, the point of it? Okay, well, let's show. Remember that thing that I remember what I showed you and um, uh, Damien, the Josina Anderson tweet. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, the one about, um, okay, like, okay, what was it? Okay, here we go. So there's a couple ones. Remember the first one that I showed you, though, this one? I showed you this a couple days ago, and it says, because um, she's pretty good. So basically what she said, in the convos, okay, so. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, no, yeah. I, I haven't seen that one. No. Okay, in the convos I've had it here, people are still trying to make it work with Sean Watson. If a good coach still comes in like he wanted, that should lay foundation for reconciliation despite internal missteps. The franchise QB is way too good to let go. That's just the truth. Okay, so that's them realizing that, right? Yeah. But at the same thing, did you see what they said in terms of like, I think you saw that one. I sent you, it talks about, uh, I'm going to try, I'm looking for it right now. I'll bring it up. Where it talks about where Josina, okay, here you go. Here you go. This one. Remember this one? I sent you guys this. People got to start realizing, too, what I keep saying. You know, I wasn't blowing smoke out of my ass when I was telling all y'all that this, this guy wants – this rookie GM needs to win and wants to win the trade if it happens, right? And it was this one where it said, I know there's uh, a great lather to propel Deshaun Watson's potential departure – from Houston, and yes, Watson holds card with his no-trade clause, but from the club's business perspective, it makes sense. Any decisions or not will be in the its best interest. Watson still makes dollars and cents. Yeah, yeah, they want to keep him. They, that's that's business. So, and then you just saw what we just showed you right there about the internal. If they make the right hire, everything. So here's go. It's gonna. It could be a moot point by the all, end of all of this. So when M, when the enemy signs. It's over. Okay. I told y'all this. It's over. But what? But what if he continues? Then what did I? I uh, my opinion on that is, then he looks like a dick, and now he has hurt himself. He has hurt himself in this whole process because now the oh. fans that he told y'all were about to march for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those fans he told y'all were about to march for him. Now what? Now what? Now what are you marching for? We gave him what he wanted, and he still. Doesn't want to reconcile, and, you, and it, it's easier to change a GM and a head coach than it is a freaking owner. Oh hell yeah! And did you, and, did you, you look? Yeah, and you knew who the owner was when you signed the piece of paper. Okay. That's what that's what upsets me. Okay, you knew was, that that name had been on your check for how long now? Let's be honest with ourselves. Right, okay? but I was of the mind that he signed his contract before they traded uh, B Hop. Yeah, he signed it after B Hop was traded. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. My whole opinion of it has changed. What is he complaining about, bro? The guy was gone. Yeah. The it, it, everything that it, that did happen, anyone could see what happened because we were sitting here in a stream, and we all said, "Well, he's not going to stay." Mm -hmm. You know, before he signed the contract, when B Hop was signed, we're like, "Well, Watson's next," and then he goes ahead and signs the contract. And we're like, "Oh, well, so much for that." I mean, the whole thing is confusing to me. Yeah. And guys, breaking news. The senior ball has just announced the offensive lineman that the Dolphins will be coaching, and Lumiel Jean Pierre will be coaching. Liam Eikenberg, I've loved his tape the more and more I've watched it. Notre Dame, I was kind of iffy on him beginning of the season. I've liked his tape more and more as I've been diving into it. Um, I'm done on him though. But Dylan Raditz, as we all know, North Dakota State. Um, a lot of people have a lot of high hopes, but here's one that I know Sharif's gonna love. Creed Humphrey will be coached by the Miami Dolphins. Um, Landon Dickerson wouldn't be able to participate anyways, but hopefully he interviews, Increase. but there you go. And then some late round picks blended in there as well. So we've given you the updates on the quarterbacks, the running backs, the wide receivers. And there is your update on the offensive lineman that the Miami dolphins will be coaching at the senior bowl coming up very soon. And, you know, I'll be following the senior bowl very closely here on Finn side, the NFL, because there's a lot of names that matter. Shout out to Mac Jones for declaring today too. That was a big one. That was a big get for them. Um, so, you know, uh, I just, yeah, the interior lineman on the team is fire. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Adrian, that, that was a lot of good players on that. Um, Shout out to Todd. I see you said your phone was dying. Appreciate you for coming through, homie, man. Um, guys, anything else on your mind you want to get out of here? Mm -hmm. 
out in the open for everyone? I just hope it happens quick, man. The decision for the off- offensive coordinator and also the decision on the enemy for Texas. Uh, that has to happen soon, man. I'm going crazy with this, you know, fins up. Oh, no, I'm, I wasn't doing final thoughts. I just wanted oh, to. I'm sorry. That. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but fins up. <laughs> and I'll be right back, Reason. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. Cap, what's good, buddy? What the hell? I just got there. Why? Rhino leaving. No, he just had to step out for a sec. He'll be right back. All right, so talk to me. I'm on Larry's panel. What the hell's going on? Is it over? Is it done? Is what done? The craziness, the divide. What divide? What's going on? I heard something about a, a, a breakdown um, message in Twitter world. I don't do social media, but something about something about uh, Ohana. Oh, basically, uh, the Miami Dolphins. Here, I'll show you right now. If you look at your screen right now, basically on um, Twitter, they changed their description. They changed it to Ohana, which means family in Hawaiian. Oh, they've been had that uh, cap. Just letting you know that. Yeah. So that's why people are talking about and just saying, like, listen, like they wouldn't have that in there if, you know, they were going to trade him, et cetera, et cetera. It's just more theories about people trying to decipher whether the Dolphins will actually trade to a tongue of a lower or not. That's all. Yeah, they've been had that on there. Just letting you know, they, they it was there since uh, the start of the season, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't not, not long after they drafted him. I'm pretty sure they changed it, actually. Yep. Yeah. So. I mean, talk to me, reason. What I mean, I know we've been going through craziness, man. Everybody has, man. But, but your real, your real feelings, man. Your real thoughts about what everything that's going on, man. Is, is it is it justified for people to get mislabeled as as not being for the team if they don't go for one way? Oh, is that what people, are, people are saying? People are saying you're not a fan if you want Watson or something like that. Yeah, either way, like if people go, well, let's say in the draft, and they go a different way from Suell, is that going to be a divide also? I don't I don't know, man. I will say this, like, you know, I, I don't it's like, you know, I get the whole argument of, oh, well, why can't I want Watson right now, but also want, you know, be okay with Tua if we don't get Watson. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's okay. But I think where people are having a, um, an issue is there was, you know, it's the same reason why, you know, the people who bang the table for Tua were going at the Rosen Truthers and the people who bang the table for Tua, you know, were going at some of the Tannehill people that still remained. Now, all of a sudden, some of those people on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, who were banging the table for Tua and were getting into arguments with people are now saying they're ready to trade Tua and they're ready to get off Tua when they've only given him nine or ten games. That's Mm -hmm. the issue. It's not a matter of, oh, you know, you'd be okay if we trade it. That's not that. I think what people is, some of these people aren't forgetting, oh, hey, you know, you were on Twitter or, hey, you were on Instagram or, hey, you were on YouTube and you were arguing with this person, that person, this person about we needed to uh, – you were ripping on Rosen or ripping on Tannehill or ripping on Fitzpatrick because we needed to uh, – now we got to uh, – you gave him nine games and you want to trade him. That's where I think people have the issue because I have been consistent where – if you can rob the Houston Texans for Deshaun Watson, sure, make the trade. Other than that, I don't want to trade Tua. I'm fine with Tua. I want listen. My whole stance has been: you saw what they did in year two with all that draft capital, all that financial capital. Mm-hmm. You saw what they did when they went focused on building the defense and sprinkling offensive assets where they could, where it made sense value wise. Now in year three, they're gonna focus on offense and sprinkle in depth and final need pieces on both sides of the ball. I want to see what they do with all this capital because they did a pretty damn good job with all that capital last year. And, That's and where reason, I'm at. And reason we in an uh, even better position than last year. Yeah, and, and we got number thing. three pick. Well, here's my thing. We can, you know, we could draft all this stuff where here, guess what? It hit me. While I was listening to some of some of y'all on Larry's panel talk about this like a couple days ago, whatever, it hit me. Well, y'all were talking about Watson. But people are failing to realize we're building a team that doesn't need to Sean Watson to win. We're building a team where Tua Tungvaloa is going to be more than good enough to win multiple Super Bowls. So why stop that process for one player that halts putting in all those pieces in place 
where that team is good enough to win without a Deshaun Watson. I mean, let's be honest. Last I checked, there were eight teams last weekend, and there's four teams this weekend that are in the playoffs without Deshaun Watson. So it can be done. So, you know, that's what I, people need to, like, you know, I get everyone, like, the sexy name and stuff like that. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We all root for the logo at the end of the day. You got to ride it out. But I think what people – see, I think a lot of people are just – the people who banged for Tua and argued and fought for pe- with people about Tua who are now saying, oh, trade him because I want Watson. You know, they kind of look like, well, if you're a woman and you're dating them, you might have trust issues with that one, right? Hypocrites, man. You know what I mean? So you're, you're kind of looking like that a little bit. But yeah, the also- people who were like – you know, the people who were just like, you know, I don't care, you know, draft to her. Like that, you know, I don't think – whether you want Watson or don't, that does not make you or define you as a Dolphin fan. Whoever's saying that's out of their freaking mind. I think I think, I think, think the only people you can say hold anything to against was why are you on the Watson side are the people who are yelling, arguing, fighting, tweeting, Instagramming. Fa- Facebook yeah. is ridiculous. The Facebook yeah. people, the Facebook I mean, people I- who are fighting, those people who are, who are ready to, like, you know, and I wanted to, but I never like was ready. Like, you know, I wasn't out here trying to decapitate people Facebook on social is on media. A whole for another level, man. Social media. Nah, that's why I don't do that, bro. Yeah. I don't do Facebook. Yeah. I don't do nothing. This is like YouTube for me. Like, like I said, I've been doing this for a couple of months. And man, from what I see, like, man, I'll jump real everywhere, quick, man. Cap. But man, it's crazy out there, man. And real quick, Cap, another, let me just add on to what Reason was saying. What also, you know, kind of irks me is that. You, we was saying we was united. We said we want this team. When when Forrest took took control of this team, one of the reasons we you said we all was united, and we said we want this team to build through the draft, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when yeah. you do this, when you do for, this hey, trade, it, when you do real quick, Kat, when you do this trade, that goes against what we what we we, just, we were saying as a whole fan window. base. Out the window. Yeah. Out the window. Yeah, but you have, to, you have to have this happen. You have to have this happen, man. You have to have it in order for the people's voices to be heard. But one thing for me, man, I'll put myself as a poster boy for anything. As as long as our fan base is on the same page. And that's Never the only way happen. we're doing this. Reason. Never reason. Happen, I mean, it, we could try. We could try. I've, I've been doing this for cap, 30 cap, some years. Never cap, been cap, if you were around last year during the whole Josh Rosen debacle, oh, Lord. you would be sick of this stuff already, bro. No, Trust from what me. you're telling me, this is a this is an ongoing pattern pattern that I should get I should get no, I should I should get used to it. Yes, <laughs> bro, cap, cap, yes. bro, yes. cap, cap. Listen yes. to me, listen to me. This is what I've told everyone. Why I'm so befuddled. This is a team and a franchise and a fans. Is we've been looking for a quarterback for 20 years. Okay, <laughs> 20 Amen. years. Amen. We draft one top five mm. after nine games. All of a sudden, this fan base, we are the connoisseurs and we are the professionals of what a quarterback is. All right. And let's leave out the fact that Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl. Yes, all sir. right. We are apparently no. we we know we are we are the only ones we know what it takes to be a professional NFL quarterback. And apparently we have become the experts in this category <laughs> after 20 years. It only took nine games of drafting a guy top five for us to become experts. And all these guys are ready to move off them. And they don't even look at the, like, here's the thing. I brought it up to Todd, buddy. They're 21, 21 and a half million dollars in the hole right now in Houston. If they trade Watson, they have to incur a 21.6 Dead cap million, dead cap hit. That takes them to forty three million in the hole. They have to enter a legit three year rebuild. You need to get rid of JJ Watt's seventeen million dollar contract. Get you can't get rid of Tunsil's nineteen because it's brand new and that's nineteen million. So yeah. you got to literally enter a three year because guess what? This year twenty one and a half million dead cap. Next year fifteen. Year after ten. Year four five. Year five zero. So year four is when he's not really affecting you. So, yeah. you know, that's what people need to realize from the financial standpoint, from their building standpoint. Like, it's not – and like I said, Carolina's I mean, in the financially, financially, I get it, and we don't want to see them do the walk of shame. I get that. But it, it's just like, you know, I'd rather the noise be squashed now than the two months that you said were – I mean, we're going to have to wait, like you said, what, yeah. two more months? We can't I'd do rather, anything now. We have to wait. 
We have to wait no, two months. Can Nothing can be done. Guys, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. RD, 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 I you can announce it. You can announce it. You can announce it. You can announce it January 30th, but you can't sign okay, it. Okay, but what I'm saying, you, you, Reason, do you think that what you're doing right now and what other panels are doing are not affecting the outcome of what's going on right now with the Dolphins? You really think that we're not a contributing factor? No. 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 No, really. They may listen, but they have hey, their own plan. Hey, so that right there, that right there, Rhino, is the problem that's going on right now. No, sir, I'm living rea in reality. I'm sorry. I, I know understand that. that, but don't I you know think that. that's an issue? Okay, look at Green Bay. Green Bay is appreciated. Their fan base are almost stockholders for that association, man. But they Why have is it that we can't be appreciated the same way? Because they've had their, they've had quarterbacks for the last thirty years. Oh, so. I know that. that has nothing no. to do with the fan base. I'm talking about the fan base, Rhino. No, but I'm it's saying not, that's why the fan base will unify around the quarterback is what I'm saying. If I'm our not, fan base had point. input, we wouldn't have got to. What are you talking about? They've been doing it before Aaron Rodgers was there and Brent Favre was there. They've been doing it for decades. Well, no, I remember when the Green Bay Packers were awful for decades. That's my memory as a No, teenager. but the unification is what I'm saying, man. Why is it that we can't have more word into what our team is doing? But why are you asking that, bro? I don't know. The, our fan base is loony. I don't know. Well, I think that we know more than what the media does, don't you think? No, they Listen, know more. If the dolphin, a, if the dolphin, okay, 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 no, no, right. if the dolphin, well, you can't the say they know more. Oh, <laughs> you can't, right? You can't say that the media people. knows more, but then get on the media when they say things. That's a very hypocritical comment to say. Bro, you're well, taking everything saying out of context. You can go ahead and keep doing that. That's fine. Yeah, but that's, no a general, it. that's a generalization, though. Too. The thing is, right? The media uses against Fox. So they're basing statistics based on five. I don't have contact so, with the players or the coaches. They do. Of course they know more. So, do they want so, to exercise that knowledge? I have no clue. And I don't know who this gentleman's name is with the skull. Cap. 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 Nice to meet you. People People go against the five. Who are you, sir? And the journalists. Hey, you know, no, I've been preaching but nothing but facts. I never preach assumptions. So if you look at my well, content, sir, you can't say I've, I've done assumptions. It's, what it's I'm saying is what benefits the team in the future long yeah. run. But, but see, I've been through the to... rebuild with Tannehill, and I've been through the rebuild with Cleo Lemon. So please don't tell me I can't right, get through another on, rebuild. Hold on, hold on a sec. Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, we got to lay some ground rules right now. Okay, this isn't like other panels, bro. Okay, I'm just gonna give you the fair warning because people fault, have my fault. No, 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 no. I got, I, fault, I gotta, I gotta, get, I, gotta I, I just, I have to because I, I, I've given it to other people. I gotta play it fair. Yo, all I ask is it's not like other panels. No yelling over people and no cutting off people. Like, try as much not to. Like, Sharif was just making a point right there. So just follow. Like, you know, I know you're passionate. I don't care about that. I don't care if you're yelling while you're making your point. Um, just, for just, reason. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good, bro. So I just uh, – dude, trust me. Uh, I've dealt with actual bad. You're not bad. So <laughs> I just I just want to put that out there. So Sharif, make your point, and then Cap, you can follow up on Sharif's point. Go ahead, Sharif. Yeah, all I'm saying is to answer your point on how Green Bay integrates the fans and integrates the fans as owners. I get what you're saying. Each seat is an owner actually at their stadium. We're not that. And I'm saying the people who are paid in place, they're using facts based on their, their statistics of their job placement that, that they went to school for. Yeah. So in the case of what Reason is trying to say and what Rhino is trying to say, we're in reality. That's what the Dolphins have to deal with. Can't we banter on the side and give our opinion? Yes. But these people who are hired, they're using subjective uh, facts against everything they're using is against their theory or their playbook and, and against facts. So we, you know, we're, we just got to deal with that. You know, and the Florida. team, and just so you know, the team doesn't like the media. Like Kyle Van Noy, literally a couple of weeks ago on the Pat McAfee show, called the Miami media "quote unquote" trash. Mm -hmm. Flores, I've heard stuff back behind the scenes in regards to Flores and the media. Flores, from what I understand, Flores isn't a fan of the media as well. Yeah, so, and you know what? You know, and, and reason just to to catch up with you, man, and and and, and the gentleman on the top. In mm -hmm. order for for us to get that exposure to the media down here. Somebody has to say something. So even you don't like, I get you're a facts guy, but what's going on right now is a contributing factor of the media down here in Miami, and that's a fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Xavier Howard, sir, do you have a contributing factor to Xavier Howard? No, we don't, but we've been hearing it through who? The media. Well, when he switched his agents, he basically told he didn't even have to go through the media on that <laughs> yeah. one. Damn. He, 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 went, he went to the same agent that got Olivier Vernon out of town and paid and Paul Soli out of yep. town and paid like literally every dolphin that this agent has been brought on to has got them paid outside of Miami. 
He brings oh, he, he brings exactly. a movie truck. He, 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 he just say anything for us to be like, oh crap. Yeah. You know what he wants right yeah, now. Yeah, but, but there I were free agents, guys. though, right? There were free agents, so it was well, he brought the, they brought them. No, they brought them off mid season. They started negotiating with us, but to, and then but, negotiations but, fell down with them, and then they just took them to free agency. Yeah, but to be fair, we had uh, Jeff Island and Phil as oh you know, god, the, the head, the head of household. Re- of that. Remember so, that? We oh were, my! We like, well, to be fair, we made the right moves because I wouldn't have paid Olivier did. Vernon what he yeah. got. Or Paul Solii, what he got. But well, Vernon is still playing, eh? At a high level for Cleveland. <laughs> I don't know about yep. high level. Well, I mean, for his, for his pay. For his pay. For his pay now. No, I mean, I mean, for me, I think that the biggest mistake is when we had Vernon. We had uh, Cam. We even had two more edge rushers, I believe, at that time. And we went all in on Dion. We never went all in on a quarterback. We'd gone all in on dumb other things. But, I mean, guys, you understand that this experiment – that we're doing right now, if it does not go the way we plan for the next year, we're gonna go and take another hit for the next seven. You do realize that, right? No, I disagree with you. Something? It's not like 15 years ago because the no, um, you may not. the cap the cap is, <laughs> the cap hit for a rookie is much smaller. You can move on from Tua very easy. I know that's exactly, true, true. but I'm just saying the rebuild, the rebuild process, and the time for a rebuild. I'm the well, one that look I, look. Listen for me, patience. I have the patience. But do you understand when I was here trying to defend Tua after the three interceptions, when everybody started getting through the riff, and, and then all of a sudden when I'm like on board and then a week later when Watson comes on, I mean, what would you do? I'm doing what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing. But what I'm trying to say is that reason is making a point. The quarterback is a very important piece, but we're building a team where you can move that chess piece out or rook out and put another quarterback in and have positive results. That's the point he's been – he's yelling at you guys. Without Buddy, I've been yelling that since before we drafted Tua. I've yeah. been saying build your offensive line so it doesn't matter what the quarterback is back there. It doesn't matter how good your weapons are because you have a, a, you have – one of the best offensive line. I've been literally saying this before we drafted Tua. And this is why I wanted Tristan Wirfs, who ended up being the not only the best tackle in the draft, but the best right tackle in football this year. Oh, you seen that highlight uh, holla, of him? Ho- holla at your boy on that one. Anyway. Oh, you seen that highlight of him? In that other, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I don't want to get off my point here. So okay. my whole issue was before I drafted Tua was I said this. I said, I don't give a crap if my quarterback's Samoan, black, white, purple, green, blue, yellow. I don't care. I want to build the best offensive line in football. Mm-hmm. So I, I so it doesn't matter if I I it doesn't matter who I put back there. As long as I put back a franchise quality quarterback, I don't have to spend money on receivers. I don't have to spend money on uh running backs. I can have one elite receiver or one elite running back and then fill in the needs with cheap free agents who want to come play here because we win and drafting properly. And why do I say that? Because all my money is going to go to my franchise quarterback and my offensive line because my offensive line can turn a average guy into a thousand yard rusher and average receivers are going to get separation when my quarterbacks got over three seconds in a clean pocket to sit there and survey. So that's where I'm sitting here. Then if I build that offensive line, this is what I said. If you go back, the receipts are out there when I was on TV's show. I said, if because everyone was worried about if Tua would get hurt, if Tua would get hurt. Whoa, didn't think they'd be sitting here talking about Joe Burrow. But anyways, mm-hmm. my whole thing was, if you're worried about Tua getting hurt, if you build that offensive line, the next year you could plop a guy right behind there, and boom, you're off and running, and it's like you didn't miss a step. It may be a little hiccup, but you're still good to go because you got that offensive line. That's yeah, where that's I'm at. That's a fact. And that's, and a fact. that's where I'm at. Pinay so well. See, if I give him the third, and like if I give him like, you know, Benjamin Albright, I'm he's consistent, you know, from what he's been reporting, he's been consistent. Three first, three seconds, and a Pro Bowl roster player is what would get the conversation started in Houston. My issue with this is if I got to give you the number three pick, Panay Sewell, check this one out. Reason might hit you with something that you might have to sit back and think about and say, oh my God, Reason's fucking right. Panay Sewell might be more important to this offense long term over 10 years than to a tongue of Aloha may be. Yes. Who would have thought about that one, huh? Yes, I That's a good point. That's a, that's a good point. Look, that's look, my issue. 
I'm giving up a transcendent potential. We're talking about, you know, I don't name a, these guys have been following me for two drafts. I've never once talked about anyone even sniffing Hall of Fame <laughs> if you put a gun to my head. And I, you put a gun to my head, I say, this kid, he's night, he plays first snap at the collegiate level at 17. And he pancaked a fool like in his first couple. And I'm like, yo, this kid, we're talking potential gold jacket. This guy might, offensive lineman, hey, Quarterbacks get injured. Tom Brady got injured, right? Tom Brady tore an okay. ACL. Quarterbacks happen. But offensive linemen, if they stay healthy, those are the irreplaceable guys, man. That's why Larry Tunsil out okay. here making goddamn quarterback money at the position. Reason, Shout out to the reason, unicorn look, line. Look, look, yeah, unicorn offensive line, yeah, I remember them. But, I mean, I mean, with that being said, man, I mean, do you have – and I'm gonna harp on my three round picks. I want three round first round picks, man. Until the until it happens, that's 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 the one thing I won't har- I'll stop harping on. But do you go ahead and do the jump with the Jets? Then now knowing what you're saying about Sewell, do you go after the number two pick at any cost now, knowing that we're not going for another quarterback? No, because I think the Jets are either going to take the quarterback or they're going to move back to a team that wants to get ahead of Atlanta to get the second quarterback. I hope so. They're going to screw us regardless. They're going to screw us regardless. Can no, I, th- no, I think that's going to be a quarterback pick, whether it's them or another team. Can I? Like, I think I, they're either going to take a quarterback or they're going to take a trade for a team to move up and take a quarterback at two. And then they're just going to add more capital because Joe Douglas is just going to add around. If they're rolling with Sam Darnold, they're going to try and accumulate as many picks because, yo, they need Devontae Smith just as much as we need him. Yeah. You know, yeah, they today. don't. They don't need Panay Sewell as much as we do because Becton yeah. has got the has got the blind side locked down. I mean, who are the best three tackles out of the draft this year, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Worth, Worth Wills, Becton. then Becton, and then Andrew Thomas started coming on at the end there. But, you know, he had a really rough start. But, you know, they've got their Becton locked down. So they've got their guy locked. Panay Sewell, I don't think it's yes, I get why people could say, hey, they might want to get him there. But Joe Douglas may say, shit, we have no receivers. Who's he going to throw to? I think Jameson Crowder is leaving. LaMichael P. Ryan, they might be a team to watch for a guy like Najee. Because who's a running back? Frank Gore and LaMichael P. Ryan. And we all know Gore's a Gates guy. So they need a running back. They need a receiver. They've got their franchise left tackle if they still could Darmold. And Fields and Wilson are both right-handed. So... I mean, you've got the left tackle for either one of those guys. You got to ask yourself, do they? We don't have our blind side. I don't think we have our blind side locked down yet. No. So, so we, we, we have to we have to put all our eggs into Chris Greer standing the standing course through all this madness the next two months. He has to c- cancel out all the noise and just stay the course. No yep. trading down. I mean, trading down would be the only option at this point. I think if. Yeah, I don't think that you know what I'll say. I've said it privately. I'll say it publicly. I don't think they're trading out. I think if yeah. Pinay's gone, I think you can pretty much run Devonte Smith or Jalen Waddle up to the podium. I don't think they're going to risk missing out on one of those guys. And then I think you could see them coming back at eighteen and trying to take my boy Cosme. They could if Rashawn Slater falls, which I don't think he will. Maybe Darisaw. They might take him there. I don't like that. Might be a little bit rich for me. I mean, we're seeing Tucker from USC go up boards right now. Liam Eikenberg, my boy Abraham Lucas from Washington, he just said he's going back to Washington, so he won't be available. So you might get they might turn around, but hey, they they might hey, you might get a guy like Pitts or Waddle or the other Bama receiver falls and they take him with 18. You never know. Reason I want to I want to run a hypothetical on you, okay. If I were to tell you the third, the 18th, the 36th, one and two next year, those five picks, okay, and you get Devonta Smith, Waddle, and Najee, would you do it? RD, what are you doing, man? Over here, too? Yo, what yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love reason. He's saying what with those mean? two picks. Those I, I give you there. five picks. I give you the third, the he 18th, wants to, he wants Nick Saban the 36th, the 36th, one, two next year. And you get Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, Najee oh, Harris. Oh, you're saying if they ship yeah. picks around so they can make sure they get all three of those guys in the first? Yeah, I'm assuming that Jalen Waddle might go to the to the whatever the Giants. So what, I don't pick till eighty, so I don't pick till eighty. So you no, know, you so your third, your eighteenth, and your thirty-six get used. Your one and two next year get used. 
and you get these three guys, and then you pick again at fifty. Yeah. So I. Oh, so I got the fiftieth pick too. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got. You know what, bro? Honestly, man, I actually think they are more in a position to move up with picks or to move around with picks than they were last year. That's why I said I kept telling people like they're in like year three of the build. I don't think they're looking to because you got to look at Byron. I keep telling people look at Byron Jones' contract. It ends right. It ends when two is entering his option. That's right. their window with this defense. That's why I say give X one more year with the guaranteed money. So now you got them lined up to the same. And then my whole thing is in those three years left, dude, if you keep pushing back the picks next year or year after, what good you is wait, that? Yeah, they're right, they're going right. to be developing during that time. Exactly. Like, I want now. So you know what, bro? Honestly, if you come out with but, but here's the but here's the other thing though. Now you still have hey, money, right? Because you still back. have I'm money. Later, yeah. 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 Right. yeah but, so we still have money though, right? So guess what? I I highly believe in Green Bay. They're not going to be able to resign their center because of their cap space. If that's Before a possibility, Wednesday. right? If that's a possibility, we overpay for him, and then the will and then the right. No, the right tackle from uh, from Buffalo, he's like aging, but he had the most amazing years this year. Necheki or whatever? Necheki. We could – yeah, Necheki or the other guy, whatever. I, I forgot which one because he's all over the stats. Yeah, N-S-E-K-E-E. Uh, Nisekhi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, yeah. He's like I'm 31 you, or 32, I think, right? No, actually, he's a bit older. He's like 34. Oh, yeah, But I think it's the black guy. Yeah, the black guy. Anyways, he – he came out of nowhere. Like they were shocked. I mean, his payroll right now is so cheap. I think it only costs five million for them. He came out. I don't think they're gonna franchise tag anybody because they need the money for other stuff, defense, especially they're over the cap. But just the cap space that we have, and if we're explosive with the Al- Alabama boys. We have the depth with Devontae, Preston, Gasecki, Limboden, and Grant. Two eyes on his second year, man. You have the running game, the new play calling. I don't know who that is right now. It might be in house, but we have a new offensive uh, line coach, which I'm like, stoked about because anything is better than that guy. And of course, we can make the contract for Lindsay uh, um, for the Green Bay Center. We can make it that it's very cheap this year because Eric Flowers and Jesse Davis will be gone next year. Because next uh, the the year after next year, because the next year it's guaranteed for them, so they can maneuver around. But it's just we want to be special, man. Go big, think big. Like oh. get the guys that he knows. Two are running back. Would you like? Can I, can I, can I, hold on a sec, Damien. Damien, hold on. Damien's itching to get in there right now. Go I, I just want to make. I just want to make a couple of points real quick. Um, ahead, first then. of all, on um, <laughs> I believe Cap for Life. He he stated about um, we never went all in on a quarterback. And we've made those mistakes in the past. A.J. Feely giving up draft capital, having a solid defense, but having big holes on offense as far as O-line. We almost played. Remember we almost paid Matt Flynn? Yep. Yes. Sir. Also, yeah, we did almost pay Matt Flynn. Also, we did that again with Trent Green. And we ended up going yep. one for 15 that season yeah. when Trent Green yeah. got Yeah, because he got, his, he got his yeah. world ended. That's yeah, we why. had too many deficiencies on offense. Right. Then we did that with Nick Saban with Devontae Cole with Dante Culpepper over oh. Drew Brees, but we had too many deficiencies oh. on offense. The, 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 the path <laughs> reason is talking about is a good path because if <laughs> we draft Panay, more than likely, Barn, we, we if, Barn, if two is not who we think he is, and which who I think he could be, being um, a Pro Bowl, All Pro quarterback who can win us a championship, he won't be here ten years. But not so well, Barn, a catastrophic <laughs> catastrophic injury will be there. We have to fill in that offense. That's the luxury of having these picks. And with all the draft picks, that's one thing Belichick does. He always tries to replenish his roster while you're winning. That's what you have to do. I, um, I just want to say, I um, also want to say um, two more things. Also, I've, I've been hearing that the Jet Sula, um, in when he was in San Francisco, Shanahan and Eric, I, I believe Reason said this, they were big on Donald when they, in San Francisco. Yeah. So that's something to keep out of eye on. If they do start to stay with Donald, they might take Panasuel. Um, also, um, 
what you're saying, brother, about the three Bama players, that's going to be literally impossible. You're going to have to bank on one of, on them falling to you in that position with the 18th and the 36th, which no, probably talking about won't trading. Happen. He's talking about trading. We, we won't have the cap. We'll probably have to give up. No, he's talking about next two years. That's what he said. He said trade the first. Not next two years, years, just next year. Next no, year. Said, it's going to be more than next year because. No, what gonna... he said was, hold on a sec. He said, if I were to tell you, you could use the third, the 18th, the 36th, the first and the second next year, those five picks. To ensure you got those three players, would you do it? But oh. It's going to be impossible because Waddle's going to go in the top 10 more than likely. And Najee's going to go top 20. Yeah, but that's what he's saying. That's- Bro, listen to me. What I'm saying again, listen. Yeah. He's saying if you use the third, the 18th, the 36th, the first, and the second next year mm-hmm. with packages to move up and around the first. So, for example, if I use <clears throat> the 18th and – the second next year, or if I, use, year. If, I, if I use the 18th and the first next year, move I move up. back up to go get Waddle after I took the okay. three. Okay, I see that. And then, and then I use the 36th and the second next year to move up into the 20s and go get Najee. That, it, it might warn a little bit more. It might, might that might warn. Yeah, a but but bit what more. are you saying is five picks to get three players? Basically, I, I just I just I, I get that, and that's that's a, that, that's beautiful to say, but realistically. You know, because mm. I know on your show you always are realistically, and that's why I love your show. Realistic as Dolphins fans, that's a pipe dream, just like with Deshaun Watson. I but mean, there are other players that dream. can take those. Yeah, there are other players like, that can. Don't get stuck on just Alabama because they're on TV all the damn time. No, he's not. It's uh, the it's, it's you're talking about the chemistry, right? Can I not yeah. talk about the chemistry, man? I'm, I'm it's a the chemistry. But or great else quarterbacks can make right away. great every. I mean, great quarterbacks. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. That's like Wait. the thing with Deshaun Watson. He's a great quarterback, but to me, he's not a he's not a he's not a yeah, plus multi- a point plus, about... um, multiplier. Like he's not Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. It's a good idea for sure. It, it is, is a good idea, idea though. So I just I'm, like I'm, I'm, like I here's the question. Okay, well, okay. Well, we're not looking at realistic. He asked yeah, the question: Damian, yes. Would you? Right. So let me ask you, Damien. If you were to give up those three picks and the two next year, and you came away with those three players, would you do it? Sitting here now. Sitting here now, and if, yeah. if I can give him his two college quarterbacks and his running back, say yes, sure, <laughs> okay. sure. Yeah, I, never mind I mean, giving I, him, I just, giving us those guys. Never mind. I mean, yeah. I mean well, that's our that's our Joe quarterback. Wisely. That's that's Joe our that's, that's that's our quarterback. You know, yeah. I, I just if I had that if I had that position, if I can get three players, I'm gonna get Panay, I'm gonna get but Smith, I, and, and 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 then I'm gonna get mm-hmm, I'm gonna get mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna get probably. And, and probably Najee Hurts. I'm, I'm going to get right. that. I'm going to put Panay. Right. If I can have anything that I want, I'm going to get Panay. Or I'm going to get a pass rusher like a Kowiti Pay or Joseph Osai with it. Because I'm yeah, looking at long. Gonna, you have to spend the 18th on Pay or Osai. I mean, more than likely, Pay might be a top 10 pick. Yeah, you know well, I mean? that's so, something you're saying. Like, that's you're the same thing with like, Waddle. Yeah, but I, I might. Well, I'd Waddle. rather I'd rather no, spend the 36th Waddle. or hopefully 50th on Boogie, bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the reason. Did you see what they did on Twitter, on um, Miami Dolphins' Twitter account? They put in Samoan. Yeah. They put the term family. So it it's my not, Watson is not going to come here, bro. And when they put family <laughs> they there, they when they put family there, next and right before the – right after the first day of the draft night, they're going to put roll tie. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, uh, they been had that Ohana thing. Yo, um – Mike, Ron, J Love, how you guys doing? Welcome. Yo, man, how about you guys? What's going on, everyone? Well, Give us your thoughts. What's on your guys' mind tonight? Uh, Peyton Williams has an open Madden lobby, by the way. Just gonna throw that out there. If anyone oh, wants yeah? to play with Preston Williams? Yeah. I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play with the Dolphins against them, um, and I'm gonna keep throwing to Preston in the game until he gets hurt. <laughs> Just to let him know what's up. Drop, drop. Hey, we yeah, you know, oh, Did you see what he tweeted the other day? Uh, that was the lyrics from a song. Yeah. It was. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was curious what that. Bro, was. no one trusts these players now, eh? It's like, <laughs> bro. <you're> <laughs> Because of freaking uh, Deshaun Watson, man. Just well, and Vince Beagle, and bro. Vin- yeah. and, and, and Armando's article. No one trusts these players now. Him too. <laughs> but then he goes with Byron Jones and does that whole like, uh, uh, like, like charity thing or whatever he was talking about. Or it was uh, civil rights. I forget. So yeah, we don't trust our players anymore. <laughs> Read them. 
for all those, for all those, for all those two critics out there that he cannot throw the ball deep. There's this beautiful clip that was just made like a couple of days ago. Tua and Devonte Smith, their career. It's only three and a half minutes long on YouTube. I don't know if you want to put it on the platform now for people to see, but it just captivates exactly how special they were together and how special Devonte Smith is just on creating just flawless passes. They were just natural passes. It was incredible. Shout, out, was, to Ma- uh, shout out to Mike, who's love for his meme in the background. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, if, if, these receivers, if these receivers can catch, then you will be, he'll have some highlights now. Can I just jump yeah, in? Buddy, yeah, what do you facts, mean? Jakeem Grant would have had a freaking the oh, best highlight man. package of his career if he could catch the football. Two deep bombs, I have yeah. captured that one, against, like, that one oh, against Cincinnati. That one against Cincinnati, I will never forget. Oh, my God. I have Reason's reaction for the Cincinnati one. It's incredible. <laughs> like, his heart was just taken out of it. It was like, what are you doing? Grant? What is power? Powerhouse, what do you got to say, bro? I'm, I'm interested in what you have to say. I kind of just got on. I missed um, the whole conversation, so I'm like lost right okay, now. Okay, so so okay. you so basically start off the show. Raekwon Davis was named to the Pro Football Writers of America All Rookie mm-hmm. Team. Um, okay, Congrats so continuing on, um, we promoted our assistant offensive line coach, um, Lemuel um, Jean Pierre, was promoted right away um, to the offensive line coach. I asked the question. Does that indicate there might be an internal hire at play? Because Canada's gone, thank God. Um, McDaniel has been promoted. Kafka, I showed the tweet. It's come out Kafka staying at KC. Um, Dorsey, I showed the Omar tweet where Omar said that we haven't shown any interest as a candidate. I've also told all these people, yes, I showed everyone my list. I got Shane Waldron, the quarterback coach from LA there. I have, um, who else? I had someone, uh, Joe Lombardi, the Saints mm-hmm. quarterback coach there. But the thing is, they could all be interviewed while they're in the playoffs, it's just they can't be hired till their team season ends. So yeah. I'm like, what is everyone sitting here waiting for, right? So anyways, I pose the question, is there an internal hire competition going on between George Godsey and Eric Studesville with we get a week with these players at the Senior Bowl, you get five days, Monday to Friday, then you get a game on the weekend. What if they say, we want to see what you guys do with these prospects, these offensive prospects, over the week, and then when the game comes, because I've talked to someone, I talked to a scout, and he told me that from what he understands, it's full go in mobile that it's going to be. They're going to play the game and everything. And so I posed the question, are they going to say, okay, hey, Godsey, you get two quarters, Studesville, you get two quarters, and Flores wants to see who gives them the best option because they're both Flores guys. So That's is he idea. creating an internal competition like you would for a position on the gridiron? Is he doing the same thing with his offensive? Because I, I said, you know, you know, powerhouse Canada. He was a mm-hmm. consultant for us last year. I feel like they would have hired him right away. Yeah. Uh, Pep Hamilton. Chargers didn't make the playoffs. He's been sitting on his hands. He's not getting hired. What? Why isn't he been hired? They would have made it. I feel Anthony Lynn mm-hmm. from what me and Rhino look like only the Jags and, um, who was it, Rhino? The Jags and the Seahawks are the two teams we saw tied to him right now. So right. nothing I going on there. Though. Why is how, he out, by the what's way? The, what's the interview process like? Like how persuasive are, are they being in hiring a new coach? That's that's the thing, right, Powell? Do, do you, you think the like Dolphins, that right? they're not intrigued? Or like, what do you well, think Powell, is going on? Let me, ask, let me ask you this, and Rhino pose this. Why would – why would Lemuel Jean Pierre accept that job, knowing full well an external hire might happen, and that guy might come in and want his own guys at all the position, yeah. uh, at all the position coaching spots? Doesn't add up. And let yeah. me ask you. All, let me ask you. All so let me ask. Team. Hold on. So let me ask you this. Now <laughs> I've given you the Senior Bowl theory. Were, was Godsey and Studesville asked about the hire, and they were both okay with it? Whichever one would be end up being OC, so they said go mm-hmm. make it, and Flores just did it anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got to think about that too, man. Like I'm yeah. just saying, it, it screams. Like I saw Kaufman said it too I, I, when I was talking to Rhino. I saw Kaufman said Chris Kaufman said it looks like it might be internal that too. So this might be something to this. 
And the thing I would not be upset at all if it's internal. Honestly, I think it's Same. best for us to go. It has to be. Yeah, it has to be outside. I That's the it's best it's move for the Dolphins right now. Yeah. yeah I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm just like they put, just like they put Fitzpatrick <laughs> into the games for a spark. We need the same thing on the coaching side. We need a spark, and it needs to come exactly. from the outside. Um, quick question, though. Why is no, 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 Wait, yeah. no, 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 bro, bro, time out. Gatsy, not time out. Gatsy can't give us a spark. brought a spark. He brought us a spark with the Arizona game, okay? The, the thing is, I'm they not say saying, that, I didn't say anything about Gatsy. I'm talking about the He's internal. You said out the external. You did say what you said. You said external. Gatsy's internal. He brings the spark as well. Yeah, but I, I didn't mention Gatsy in any way, shape, or form. I'm talking I about am. A hire for the offensive coordinator position. I yeah, but real, I real quick, Lorano, to add on what you was uh, saying, uh, he also, I heard he also took over uh, during halftime with KC. So that's what I'm saying. Now, I, I agree with your point, bro. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying he did bring some spark. So there I'm is. Just, I'm just saying it's very interesting, man. It just yeah. shows you how in the Gailey is. Hold on, mm -hmm. let's hear. Uh, Ryan, sure. um, Ron, you, Ron, you were going to make a point. Let's hear what you have to say about. Yeah, sorry about that, bro. Yeah, I was just going to comment on what uh, Rhino just said. Not that Godzi or Godzi can't bring us a spark, and and it, you know you're making a good valid point. But my opinion, I I, I would like to see somebody from from the outside, uh, just something different. Now, guys, can I just jump in and say something right quick? Hold on, let him finish his point. Sure, let him finish his point, bro. Jesus, you finish your point, Ron. Yeah, that, that, that's um, that's you know, that's that's the only point. I believe that you know we should get somebody from the outside. Mm -hmm. but now, again, Sharif, it's just my opinion, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. Now, Sharif, go ahead. Um, I just I I'm listening to all of the uh, you know, but what I've seen with this team in terms of the coaching, and what I you know once again what I've seen with New England is like coaches being hi hired from New England staff every year, and we have ten wins this year, and we will have coaching staff coaches probably hired from us this year. Hopefully not. Flores said it, but Graham left. Coaches leave for, from this team to do get higher jobs. What I'd like to see the Dolphins is be a tree, a coaching tree under Belichick and Flores that coaches get jobs from us. And that's a good thing. Right? Two years in, I don't know, bro. Well, that that's my point. Farm system of job. For that's football. my point. Don't you think Flores like wants to hire Godsey and he'll be under that tree? Like, like under cool. Flores? He definitely knows. Knows. He so definitely knows. Knows. Can I just finish? Isn't it That's what he did point. with Patrick Graham? He sent Patrick Graham prop in yeah. packing and he promoted his own guy, Josh Boyer. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he might want to do the same thing on the offensive side. Right. Yeah, so I would be cool with that. Just keep promoting and build a farm system for the NFL. That's mm -hmm. what New England did. Now, what's wrong and, with that? And yeah, but we haven't shown the offensive is, side. It's clear. And, and what's and underrated and is Godsey's already familiar with Tua. And Tua's familiar with Godsey. So I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if he's the guy. Yeah, no, what's crazy is, that's what I'm saying. If you look at what me and Rhino brought up with that old interview after the Rams game, where Tua clearly had an issue with comfortability, mm -hmm. and you know, just you know, he was quest clearly questioning some of Gailey's play calls, especially the starting script, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you go and watch how he acted with Godsey, and those relationships look night and day. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So but you can clearly tell he trusts Godsey. He doesn't trust Gailey. Yeah, so but I feel like up. also what you have to take into account here is options. Like outside of Godsey and Gailey, what other options did Tua have as far as someone to lean on? Luckily, Godsey stepped up to the plate, and obviously he's a part of the floor's tree. But I feel like as far as like really being able to determine whether or not that relationship is really as strong as it is, hear me out. Um we would have to get a little bit more experience, more time to really see, wow, is this really the deal? Or was it a matter of, Fair. you know, mm -hmm. Tua not having any other option to lean on because he was the best person to go to because our options were probably like two yeah. at best. Yeah. So like, I just feel like with everything that's going on with the Dolphins from the coaching side to the player side, like there's just such a small sample size to be making these 
uh, assumptions with. We need to get into year three before we can really start being able to dissect these these coaching trees and these relationships. Like, again, Godsey, 100%, stay with the team for the next five years, please, 10 years, um, hopefully, if he does well. But as far as what I meant by the spark thing, just we need to keep bringing in uh, You're not people wrong. from – You're not wrong. From, from from other organizations because obviously, you know, there's nothing that hurts this team uh, from bringing in someone like, you know, um, uh, Lombardi or someone like, like Callahan or someone like, um, you know, whoever else. I'm just saying, like, that spark can come from the outside. Is, yeah. yeah, but that's you know, the whole point I, I was making earlier. You would have already yeah. heard – they would have already interviewed them. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point, yeah. right? You would you would have interviewed them during the playoff process. Look at Dan ha- Dan Campbell. Detroit interviewed him during the process. Yeah. As soon as the Saints lost, bam! Literally, not even an hour later, Dan Campbell was named the head coach. Like that's that, like that's what I'm sitting here saying. Like I, Lombardi was on my list. They would have already interviewed him. Dorsey, yeah. they, we would have already heard about. Like that's what I'm sitting here saying. They would have already interviewed these guys, and if they liked one, they just would have waited. The problem is all the external names you've heard. If you go back at the list that was released, Mike McDaniel promoted in, in internally, right? Matt Canada promoted internally. Pep Hamilton. I mean, crickets are louder than the updates on Pep <laughs> Hamilton right now. And then what yeah. else was there? And then the rest of it. And then Tony Elliott was the other um, external guy. And Tony Elliott told them right away, literally a couple hours after it broke, said, I'm staying at Clemson. So, yeah. And then the other two guys on the list were both internal. Do so we, we know just gone through interview? everyone. What? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But just like I can't find anything as far as like confirmation, like X person interviewed, like these these sleeper candidates. Like uh, like Lombardi or they would have told that, buddy. People. That's what I'm telling you. You would have heard yeah, it. We would have heard it, right? This is what I'm yeah. telling you. That yeah, would have yeah. came out because you have to announce interviews, bro. Right. You can't. You can't just conduct secret interviews, dude. No, it doesn't work like that, man. So yeah. So like they they would have had to announce them, man. Because that all ties into the Rooney rule, right? You would have had to announce them, dude. So they didn't announce any of them. That's what I'm sitting here and telling people. Like, this seems like it's more and more. This is internal. Like, we like I wanted Kafka. We would have heard. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like Dorsey would have heard. And, you know, now Dorsey, you might not have heard just because if you didn't know what was happening with Dabble and the Chargers job. But I feel like they would have interviewed him anyways. So... I, I don't know, man. I think this is leaning towards internal, bro. And, I mean, God see, mm. like I told you all, in 2015, the Texans had the 15th best passing game in the NFL, and he did that with um, Yates. Um, who else? He did that with Yates, Hoyer. Freaking Hoyer. Um, Osweiler? Yeah, he had no, Osweiler Savage. wasn't on the team. Savage. Osweiler. Uh, Savage and one other guy. <laughs> God, the Whatever. names uh, they're, they're all name terrible. Matt Leiner. No, Matt Leiner. No, no, no. It was it was garbage. It's not a bad decision. Yeah. Man. Brandon Whedon. It was Brandon Whedon. Oh, Brandon God. Whedon. Wow. The <laughs> second round pick. <laughs> right? Right? And, they, no, and the first what round. they did was they kept, yeah, it was the first round. Cleveland moved up to Jesus. get him like in the twenties or whatever. <laughs> early twenties or late teens. Um, what they did was they still won like eight or nine games with all those guys. And what they would do is just rotate. And guys yeah. who got hurt, so they had to put in new guys. So like I'm just saying, like, that's kind of crazy. And yes, and Andrew Godsey does have ties with Bill O'Brien. They're both from the O'Leary tree. You can go back to uh, Georgia Tech, and then um, they came back at UCF. So, you think they wanted Bill O'Brien before he took the job at Bama? Yeah, apparently Doug Marone's going to Bama too, eh? Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, Doug, too? Jesus. Wow. Belichick too, maybe, Yeah, when he leaves. Hey, can we coach um, the Senior Bowl with, like, an interim – um, offensive coordinator while we're still doing our, you know, assessments or going through our hiring process for the OC? Or do we have to 100% have our locked in OC by uh, Saturday? Mm-hmm. We you don't. Have, it's, it's your staff. It's we just staff, right? Yeah. Okay. That's that's at least a, a sigh of relief, right? 
Mm-hmm. Hey, thank God mm-hmm. we're not picking a, or we're not in a position where we need to go into a head coach search this year because, <laughs> holy yeah. crap! Thank but God reason, for the reason, man. Did you hear what they did with the combine? Did you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah the four different things. Yeah. So doesn't that help us tremendously? Because we're getting like the Senior Bowl; they're all there. Yeah, I don't think they have enough uh, scouts to go to all the Pro Bowls, like as uh, to all the Pro Days as they're happening for all the small schools and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to a scout, and I was told that basically from the belief is that they're still going to allow team scouts to go to the combine. Oh, they are. Okay. Mm-hmm. And but they're it's not just gonna be a, a small problem. number. It's just gonna be a small. Yeah, they are. They're splitting up into four different, four different oh, things, and then most of okay. it they're gonna be doing it live. But it'll be majority of people will be like virtually covering it. But mm. I, from what I've understand, they're gonna allow um, NFL scouts there. And guys, I'm. I I'm, asked that. that was like I'm researching thing, vaccine in terms of the four major sports and who's gonna <laughs> take it first. Yes, the Moderna vaccine is actually first on the table. So this will cause football players to have preseason again without worry this is why the vaccine is important and so i'm researching that for um, well look at what rhino said name of a major sport where they've found that on field, you know yeah. on field contact has led to transmission none, yeah, mm, none. Really? right so, they don't yeah, have that they, yet right they may just have to take the chlorophyll or the uh no, they, they, they anything that's passed is when they go to a restaurant or they're sitting in a room when you're outside. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but the, the percentages drop so right. low, it's right. highly unlikely. And it's not really right. passed, it can be passed by sweat, but that's not really the, the and main sports way. players are taking mm-hmm. like hydrochloroquine to block any like. So, what I'm hearing is they could just have that combine of that this year, yeah, yeah, they're, they're gonna find a way. All yeah, I'm saying is, I don't know, they just Miami say, Dolphins. Yeah. I need a name on this list as your offensive coordinator. Oh, dude, Callahan has some cross off off Mike. Mike. Oh, oh, Mike. No. <laughs> cross off Mike. Oh, give him the back of the Brent's truck for my boy Kafka. Let's go. Lombardi, I will take. Lombardi. And everyone's hey. sleeping on my boy Luke Getze. I Shane, ain't. Shane I'm Walden the only one the that's there, right? Me. Yeah, Shane Walden. Walden. Okay. I'm Jeez. the only person I've seen that suggested Getsy. Other people have suggested Waldron, like I have and stuff, but right. Getsy. So that's the guy I'd look at. Reason, why don't you like Bill Callahan, bro? <laughs> what? Why don't you like Bill Callahan? I like the innovation on this list. Mm-hmm. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I speak old Bill? Callahan? And the only reason, and the only reason no. George Godsey, <laughs> the only re- no. yeah, you can. The only reason George Godsey is on this list because I had to have an internal option. Yeah. Any, anyways, you may, Damien, let it rip. <laughs> um, no, Damien, one, I, as far as far as O line okay. coach, he's outstanding. As far as being an O line coach, but you know, oh. you, you can tell us <sighs> Bill, Bill Callahan. You, but you can oh. you can go back to when he was with the Raiders. You know, yes, he was OC, but how much of that was Gruden? Me being a University of Nebraska fan, I despise Bill Callahan. Yeah, but that's well, let, no, 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 no. Recently, okay. to, uh, to now, last okay. decade. I mean, as far as being an O line coach, he's outstanding. But as far as offensive being innovating, innovating the offensive game, how much the offensive game has changed now, and and is and is moving to different things, I just don't think that would be the guy. I'm more opposed to just staying in the house with God. See, then he has a relationship with our young quarterback. Our young quarterback feels comfortable with him, and we saw how he calls plays to. Make Tua feel comfortable. And Tua act, was actually yeah. throwing down the field in the Arizona game. He was throwing exactly. down the field to step well, back. Well, anybody can Kansas call a better City. game than Gary. Bill I'm just Callahan saying. is, <laughs> to me, I put him in a Chan Gelly type of, of, of mode. Like he's an older guy. I think the game is kind of like O line like coaching. Yeah. He's outstanding. It's a Here's O-line the receipt coach. for the Cowboys 2012, 2014. 2014, they won 12 and 4. Okay. But I mean, uh, also they had, round, yeah, they had an outstanding O line. Yeah, they had an outstanding O line. Winning outstanding record. O-line. Yeah, I mean, I mean, shoot, shoot. <laughs> three people, was on winning team. Three people in the Pro Bowl or, in, in the yeah, Pro Bowl. Yeah, what does that mean? So Bill Callahan. Bill Callahan was the coach for the Raiders and got boat raced in the Super Bowl. What does that mean? Well, yeah, I think, I think we Charlie, need to stay Charlie Weiss was the OC for New England, and look at his career now. Romeo yeah, Cornell, but, same thing. He <laughs> really does team, have man. a track record, though, with the O-line. And if there's anything I feel like we definitely need to lock in for Tua, 
it's the O-line. And that, again, affects not only Tua's play, but then the run game that we obviously also yeah. need to improve. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with Eric Studsville at the helm with the run game, especially with everything he's done with Miles Gaskin and Savon Ahmed, I feel good about that. We grab someone like Najee Harris or Javante Williams, bring him in in a supposed universe right. built where uh, sure. Callahan comes in. Um, two years going. from now, at least one of those people, Aaron, Austin Jackson, Robert Hunt, or uh, Solomon Kinley becomes a pro bowler, 100%. If we draft someone like um, um, like Jay Marshall or Panay Sewell um, in, in the draft, you know, we're really building and giving him <laughs> awesome pieces to build on top of that run game. And uh, I don't know, man. I just – I got really excited about that because not only did he get – three pro, pro bowlers in uh, Dallas, but he got two in, in Washington with Trent Williams and Brandon Scherf. And right. he actually got one this year with, with Cleveland uh, and that guy, Joe Bonito or whatever, I forget his name, but, but it's proven. It's proven that this guy is just literally mastered the offensive with coaching O-line. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I've never knocked that. Can I just, I just want to, cause I got that. this guy. But Anthony, has, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anthony Epizito, because this guy's going off about apparently I'm wrong about coordinators or whatever, and when the interview process can happen. Uh, just for you to see, dude, if you go up here, it talks about how um, this is the article. I can put the article down for you guys to see. But this right here talks about how coordinators can interview during, right? In-person interviews may begin for a head coach or coordinator position and for higher-level employees, all right, for whose club is not participating in the postseason on January 4th. Virtual interviews for head coach or coordinator positions may begin with coaches whose clubs have a bye in the first week of the playoffs and may continue through the conclusion of the wild card weekend on January 10th, et cetera, et cetera, right there. And then it talks about how they can continue on after January 17th and how you can interview during the whole process. Right? There you go. So, yeah, you can interview with teams during. So, just had to put that out there. Anyways, okay. continue. Um, well, then on top of that, not only could he come in, Callahan, but he could also bring in Joe Lombardi. If, I don't know. That's that's yeah. really like a huge if, but like if he were to come and he were able to bring somebody with him, I would feel like... Uh, you know, that could be a possibility. So we've kind of killed two birds with one stone there. The same. Floor as a staff, though. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get the, the Dolphin fans to understand is that <laughs> we're doing pretty fine <laughs> internally. And I think this is our second year with, with Grand Flores. And we want smart people. O'Shea couldn't last. Our senior guy got sick from Detroit Lions. We would have kept him if I if you asked me. Um you know, we, we, we are cool with what we're doing. You know, I think Flores doesn't really want to have to deal with offense. So now, and look at what Flores does once he works with you. We work with Boyer. Boyer gets better internally. So I think he's going to work with Studville and work with Godsey during the senior bowl. And guess what? Working with him, when they, when he, when they transition under Flores to a higher position, they actually work out better. We're the best defense this year with Boyer. I just hope we I just hope we get a younger coach. I don't want us to get another old coach and that's outdated and go through the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't like my bubble screen. I just want to get somebody <laughs> that wants to stay. <laughs> I like that's it for all. those reasons, man. That's it. I mean, honestly, like I, I just think it's the most proven it's one of the most proven track records I've seen in a lot of coaches that, that have been up. I mean, you really can't fake that when you go to three separate teams and you have pro bowlers in each one. That's the offensive yeah. coordinator. I mean, it's the um, offensive line coach. But he was OC, he though. He was OC for all those teams. Cowboys, Redskins, and uh, it will accept. Uh, so, so it wasn't um, their offensive line coach? You think it was Cleveland. all him? Huh? No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm yeah, but all I'm saying fact, is we're we're wanting to hire a guy, hire yeah, yeah. a guy because he's got a couple offensive line pro bowlers, and we're not talking about innovation or quarterbacks that have developed under him. Uh, well, yeah, he ain't developed Romo there when in sure. Dallas. He ain't developed none of them. He develops all old lines. 
But see, that's my issue here. We're dealing with the develop, and this is, was my issue with the Gailey process. If you go back to the off season when I was on this channel, I posed the question to everyone. I'm still waiting for the answer. When I said, mm -hmm. "Name me a quarterback Chan Gailey has developed," doesn't exist. Doesn't yeah. it? It it. it, it ceases to exist so salvador renteria says reason have you considered making a spotify podcast salvador i have a spotify podcast you can go search dolphins brawl right there and then right there your season recap boom rampant okay. rumors that's the latest um that's the latest um one we had going on with it's me richmond webb and uh mr ball game so you can go check that out. We drop a new episode every week. So go give that a look if you want some Spotify content. Have I thought about putting this on Spotify? Yes, but I would probably condense it in terms of like if the first 30, 45 minutes are me talking about subjects and stuff like that, I would probably cut it after that and leave the panel part stuff out just because I'm not trying to put two or three hour hey. podcasts up on there. You know what I mean? 45 minutes to an hour yeah. is the max you go on Spotify. So you'd have to you'd have to do some <laughs> I'd have to do some trimming. Yeah. So I would literally mm -hmm. have to have a part of my every podcast where like what I do on YouTube where like I cut out where I know this is the point where I can cut it at. Well, you can cut everything out for Pyro. It'll be fine. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wait, what what happened? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, all he says Gotcha. Yo, so so we're at the ten hour, two hour, ten minute mark. Um, I was only gonna do like an hour, but here we are. So let's go through some final thoughts, Rano. Let's start with your final thoughts, buddy. Uh, like I said, I just hope it goes by quick. I I, I really like to get some an uh, answers for my sanity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, fins right. up and King Tua, Sharif. Uh, when you know me, I'm the conservative dolphin. I think we're. I, I think are you though? <laughs> <laughs> I I think, I think that we're gonna um be internal from here on out and be a farm system of coaches for the NFL. We're Mike. gonna be smart. We're smart coaches. Mike, what what's up, buddy? Let's hear your final thoughts. Um, <laughs> that was fun. Um, all I want the Dolphins to do is to make the right decision. Uh, don't be forced. Uh, to rush anything because of the senior bowl or whatnot, just make the right decision and whatever floors goes with, I'll be happy with. Even if it's Godsey, even if it's Callahan, even if it's, uh, you know, Studsville, it doesn't matter. If he says it's the right call, it's the right call. Fins up. Uh, Pyro, let's get your, oh, sorry, Damien, let's get your final thoughts. Just I'm excited about man all season senior bowl as far and also the draft process and then free agency and just seeing us put the weapons around our young quarterback that he needs and building this team the right way and building it for a championship, man. Fins up. Amen. Fins up. Pyro, let's hear your final thoughts, buddy. All I have to say is if I had Deshaun Watson, I would have won two more games. And always, as always, root against the Texans. <laughs> this guy. Oh my God, this guy. Najee Harris. I need Najee Harris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we would have had more successful bubble screens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Power up. Let's hear your final thoughts, buddy. Pyro, man, you gotta change your profile pic back to Najee, man. <laughs> we need that look. But yeah, um, I'm I will also <laughs> like to get Pernod so well. You would have good been good on the screen passes on third and long. <laughs> yeah, this guy's hilarious. Jet I'm looking speed, forward jet. to um, uh, looking speed. forward to us finding our coach, our offensive coordinator. Hopefully, we stay young and build from there, and um. This guy can help two out, and yeah, go from there. Pins up. There we go, wow. Pyro. Ron, Ron, let's hear your final thoughts. I buddy. like Najee Harris. Yeah, um, pretty much kind of the same thing that you all you know said. Just trying to get through this OC thing, uh, make some smart decisions, and and uh, do what's right for the team, and stay with the course. I truly believe that in this whole Watson thing, I can't wait till it's 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 over with because it's nothing but a pile of dog poop, and that's where it's going to end. So Tua, 
for the next 15 years, man. That's 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 who I am. And yes. thank you, I Reason, like him, for man. letting me. No problem, bro. Appreciate you coming on, buddy. Uh, J Love, you haven't said a word the whole <laughs> time. So hopefully your final thoughts are long, extensive, and enticing. So the floor is yours, my friend. Listen, homie. Finn's family I only came on here for one thing to say one thing only. Panice so well at three. Panice so well at three. Hey, let's go. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. Damn, we we stop with the with the BS, Rashawn Slater is not better than Panasua or even close. Bro, Bro, man, Please, Panasua at three. I would come on this podcast every <laughs> single day and say Panasua at three. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Love nice. it. I agree, bro. I agree, bro. Um, so, guys, I'm going to be back tomorrow night, hopefully. Um, I'll probably be back later in the evening, and I'll be doing my free agent list. Um, yeah, and other than that, I'll be back tomorrow night. We'll do the top 10 free agents that I would target if I was the Miami Dolphins. Um, so the top five, I got some clips with them, little mini scouting reports, and then six through 10, and I'll just list them, give you guys quick little scouting reports, and we'll go from there, all right? So tomorrow night, top 10 free agents. Reason would target if he was the Miami Dolphins. So until tomorrow night, guys, y'all already know what time it is. Subscribe if you're new here. Hit that like button. Still over 200 of you in the room right now. Um, you can donate through the channel, paypal.me slash finside, through the super chat. You can go join the Patreon, $2, $5, $10, $15, $20 levels. Of course, shout out to Patch Vibes. Shout out to This Is The Year. And obviously, shout out to the official Finside the NFL merch shop. Other than that, guys, I will see you right here tomorrow night. I'm thinking around 930, 9, 930 tomorrow night, okay? So I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Until then, mm -hmm. you already know what time it is. Fins up all day, every day, baby. Fins up. Fins up. Fins up. Fins up.